Welcome to sold out and rapidly filling Bronco Stadium here in Boise, Idaho. The Idaho Vandals and Boise State Broncos with identical records in and out of the Big Sky Conference playing for the league championship and an automatic berth into the 1AA National Playoffs, which start next weekend. Hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Manili along with Tom Scott to call this one for you, and we have a whale of a matchup, an electric atmosphere, a perfect day, and it promises to be the thing that memories are made of. Well, Vandal fans are out here in force, as you can see, but Bronco fans are are really going to be vocal today because they really believe, and uh, they've seen what this team can do. They, they've seen what this team can do in the clutch. They saw it last week on the 92-yard drive to beat Eastern Washington. They've, they've seen the character of this team and the not-quit aspect of it, and the team is not looking at this as past Bronco teams have looked at this game. Uh, they've been kind of on their heels. This team is going full speed ahead, and Joe O'Brien in particular has not been shy about it this week. And uh, he, he'll be basking in glory at the end of the game, or he'll be taking a few shots. Well, he'll be standing up whatever is going on because he's, uh, he's a stand-up kind of guy. He's the heart and soul of this team this year. It's uh, a great matchup. We've talked about the fact they're both uh, ranked so high. Idaho third in the nation, Boise State sixth, and uh, explosive offenses, stubborn defenses, uh, some key players to be watching for. We'll focus in very early on the guys whose names you'll be hearing a lot. Defensively, Tom's already mentioned Joe O'Brien, and he and the Bronco defense will be faced with the task of stopping Sheridan May, the Big Sky rushing leader, and the 1AA career touchdown record holder. Well, Joe coming in with uh, ten and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss, and uh, really the inspirational leader of the BSU defense. Uh, he's been that way for two years. He's surrounded by great people this year. Sheridan May uh, on the other hand, has really changed, as we mentioned in the pregame, changed the whole uh, look of the Vandal offense the last three years with his rushing ability. Three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, and once he gets into the secondary, he can break one at any time. Had a 70-yarder against Northern Iowa two weeks ago. He is a game-breaker, and the Vandals hope to use him to break the Broncos today. Sheridan May, a senior out of Tacoma. Joe O'Brien, a senior out of Pittsburgh, California. Uh, Tony Hildy, just a sophomore from uh, Pendleton, Oregon. Oregon. And what a story he has been in the very brief time he's been at Boise State. Duke Garrett, the leader of this Idaho defense, a senior from Tacoma who will be trying to control Hildy and thus control the Broncos. Well, Tony Hildy is probably the most underrated quarterback in the big sky. You don't become 9-1 and one without a great quarterback like Tony Hildy. 23 touchdowns, 9 interceptions on the year. Duke Garrett has been a monster in the midway for the Vandals as their rushing defense has decreased by 100 yards uh, over last season. Duke Garrett with seven sacks on the season from his linebacker position. We are awaiting the toss of the coin. We'll find out just how we start this thing when we come back. Today's game between the Idaho Vandals and the Boise State Broncos brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. U.S. Bank of Idaho. We're here for the real risk takers in Idaho. Small business owners. Blackers Complete Home Furnishings. America's name brand headquarters where you always buy for less. Chili's Grill and Bar. Chili's. It's like no place else. And your Treasure Valley Dodge dealers. See all that's new from the new Dodge at your Treasure Valley Dodge dealer. Larry and Tom Scott with you back at Bronco Stadium where the stands are rapidly filling. There'll be close to 24,000 here, and it is as perfect a day in late November as you could expect for a game that will decide the Big Sky Championship and, more importantly, bragging rights in the state of Idaho for the next 12 months. We've got gorgeous blue skies with an occasional cloud, the temperature approaching the mid-30s, and a very light breeze that has come up a bit in the last half hour. The Broncos are going to receive, but not because they won the toss. Idaho making an early defensive statement 
deferring after winning the toss, deferring to the second half, allowing the Broncos to, to receive. So the Vandals will be kicking off from your left to your right and uh, defending the north end zone. Boise State started out winning eight and tying one in the first 11 games these two teams played, and they destroyed the Vandals in the very first game of the series, 42-14 in 1971. Last year, 49-16 to up in Moscow, and then, of course, two years ago in Skip Hall's final game at Boise State, the worst loss in Bronco history, 62-16. to BSU's last win, 1981 in Moscow, that sent BSU to the playoffs. 45 to 43, but this is a whole different day for Boise State, a 9 and 1 team that has just gotten better and better as the season has progressed. As you mentioned, the Vandals will be kicking off their coverage team just taking the field. The Broncos will have uh, Willie Bowens waiting at the goal line, flanked by uh, Jermaine Hudson on the near side, and Dell Graven should be down there too. And Ryan Wolverton teeing it up uh, with the bare foot, and it's a little bit cool on that blue turf today for Wolverton. Or rather, Eddie Howard. I'm sorry, Eddie Howard. Willie Bowen's averaging 25 yards uh, kickoff return. Has not had any breakers lately. Last week, of course, uh, hampered by mud at Eastern Washington. Eddie Howard doing the kicking off today. Senior from West Covina, California, the Vandal punter who's had a great run here in November in the punting department. Just about ready to go. And we're underway. It's Hudson, 20, and out of bounds across the 25. The Broncos will start with good field position at their 29-yard line. Tony Hildy in the offense. As Hildy comes out, some terrific numbers in his second season running the Boise State offense. 54% uh, completion, more than 2,400 yards through the air, 23 touchdowns, only nine interceptions. He is poised to have the second best passing season in Boise State history, second only to Jim McMillan in 1974. Broncos on first and 10 on their 29-yard line. Opening play here at Broncos Stadium. Motion man is Bernie Zimmerman. Hill on the rollout. Going deep, got Housky behind the defense at the 40 and down at the Idaho 35-yard line. And if Hildy could have delivered the ball, Housky was gone. He was five yards behind the defender. We'll have to see this one again, but it looked like Boise State had a two-on-one. Both Akibi and Housky running vertical routes down the right hash. And Housky all alone. Montrell Williams making a touchdown saving tackle on the senior from Marysville, Washington. So big play on play number one for the Broncos. First and 10 from the Vandal, 34. Oh. Casey Adams comes outside, slips a tackler and dives forward for a gain of three. Commercial tire starting lineups behind Hildy. Casey Adams, Del Graven, the senior Jared Housky, Ryan Akibi, and Bernie Zimmerman. All but Housky will return next year, as will this entire group. Jeffrey, Venus, Kaufman, Toyos, and LaPayne up front for the Broncos. Bernie Zimmerman, the tight end, uh, originally signed with Idaho. Spotted at the 32 in his second and eight. Hilly with a quick toss. Rumbled and caught by Akibi inside the 20. First down Broncos are in the red zone where they've been extremely productive this season. Akibi on the slant. A quick hitter as Hildy is two for two and has the Broncos on the 19-yard line. Akibi does not have the hands of Ryan Akibi, <laughs> of uh, Jared Housky, but uh, great concentration that time by the sophomore and Tony Hildy's best friend. First down Broncos at the 19-yard line. Bernie Zimmerman lined up at fullback. Now he may shift and he does. For a gain of two. Look at the Vandal defense. Uh, they start up front 
with Phillips, Wilson, Zemer, and Mitchell. Ryan Phillips, Phillips extremely active with 11 and a half sacks, 11 tackles for loss. Duke Garrett, the leading tackler. Josh Fetter and Tommy Connect, the other linebackers. And the secondary, West Hill, Smith, and Williams. Gain of two for the Broncos. Second and eight at the Vandals' 17-yard line. Opening possession. We play two minutes. The Broncos on the move. Here's the shifting. No back attack now for the Broncos. Casey Adams split wide. Hildy hits Adams back to the inside on something of a middle screen. It gains just a yard. And then left third and seven. Exactly. A cutback screen set up to Casey Adams. Broncos needed to get that block to make it go and did not. So the first uh, big third down situation of the day for the Broncos. Casey Adams comes out of the game. And on this third and eight, Del Graven will be the lone back. Third and eight, first big down of the day. And there will be a lot of them before it's done. Hill, he gets good protection, going to the end zone. Akimi, touchdown Broncos! Montrell Williams, the right corner, working on Ryan Akibi, fell down. Pitch and catch. Hildy to Akibi for the ninth time this year. Great protection as the, brand, the Vandals were bringing five. There you see Montrell Williams hitting the turf, and Akibi has his ninth touchdown catch of 1994. Greg Erickson is 32 of 35 in the point after department. Had one uh, go wide on him in the mud last week at Cheney, Washington. This one in perfect conditions is perfect. And with 12.03 left in the first quarter, the Broncos have drawn first blood. Larry Vanilli and Tom Scott with you, awaiting the Bronco kickoff after they have driven 71 yards to a touchdown. Six plays, nearly three minutes. And the coaches couldn't have drawn it out any better. As Boise State takes a 7-0 lead. Greg Erickson set to kick it off to Montrell Williams and Reggie, excuse me, Dwight McKenzie. It's Williams from the seven. Straight up field. Breaks a tackle across the 30, and the Vandals will start at the 36-yard line. Excellent field position for Idaho. Let's see what the, the Vandals do to answer the Bronco touchdown as Brian Brennan takes the field for the University of Idaho. His first start on the road, he is 4-0 and as a starter, all in the Kibbe Dome. Redshirt freshman out of Lacey, Washington, 1,400 yards with 15 touchdowns, only four interceptions, and he has been an inspiration. When Eric Heisall went down, he stepped in. The Vandal offense didn't miss a beat. Going to the air on first down, going deep. Got his receiver, Kyle Gary can't hang on. Gary had Keith Walk Green beaten, but Brennan's pass a bit long. The Broncos today want to have Rasheed Gale on Kyle Gary. And what happened that time, the, band, the Broncos made a late switch and the Vandals got Kyle Gary on Keith Walk Green, a matchup that they like. Here are the remainder of the commercial tire starting lineups for Idaho. Sheridan May, the Big Sky rushing leader. Dwight McKenzie, Kyle Gary, Keith Neal, and tight end Avery Griggs. And up front, Colau, Hughes, Johnson, Lukes, and Mills. Second and 10 Vandals from the 36. Sheridan May with his first carry, hit at the line of scrimmage. Forward progress for a gain of one. Cliff Robinson, the first man to get there, and Jason Payne finishing the play. So May's first carry, much like Adams' first carry. Short yardage, and the Vandals are in a third and long. Look at the Bronco defense. Uh, this is the base defense with four down linemen, Weston, Shepard, Thompson, and O'Brien. Linebackers of Watson, Smith, and Reed. The secondary, which will be bolstered now on third and long. Gale, Walkreen, Cook, and Miller. Jason Payne added to that group as the Broncos go to five defensive backs. Third and nine. Brennan to the air. Going deep down the near side. Rashid Gale in coverage. Knocks it away. Incomplete. Kyle Gary had no chance. And the Vandals will punt three and out for Idaho in their first possession. Great coverage that time by Rashid Gale. The Broncos stayed in their base defense, only rushed four, dropped seven men back into coverage. 
You well, see you good protection for Brennan here, but great coverage by R uh, Rashid Gale on Kyle Gary. Step for step all the way. Gale had a chance at the ball, and Gary knocking it loose. And you see exactly why the Broncos want Rashid Gale as the coverage guy on Kyle Gary. He's got the speed to stay with it. Casey Adams won't mess with the punt, and it is down by a Vandal at the 26-yard line. Boise stayed on for its second possession. Broncos leading 7-0 here very early. A capacity crowd looking on. Both bands booming, and uh, we've got a great start to what an we anticipate to be a great football game here. The Broncos scored in six plays. The Vandals went three and out. Boise stayed back on offense with first down at the Bronco 26-yard line. Kelly with Adams and Graven behind him. A little reverse. Whistles down before the play. And that will be by rule no start. Might be procedure on Boise State. That was uh, the first wrinkle of the day. A legal procedure will be the call. You saw that one developing. The give to Casey Adams. It was going to be a pitch to Housky. Mike Stanley makes the call and the ball goes back to the Boise State 21 yard line. It was going to be a pitch to Housky on a reverse right. Housky with one carry this year for a minus 19 yards and that one wasn't developing like it was going to be much more productive. First and 15. Now they fake it and Adams is outside and he's behind the defense. 40, 45, cuts back, caught from behind in Vandal territory at the 43. So the Broncos showed the reverse and then faked it, and Adams swept left end for big oh, yardage. Oh, Al Borges. Boise State offensive coordinator Al Borges. You saw it that way, now look at it this way. The same play, the fake to Housky. Everybody fights, and Casey is in the open field. A gain down to the Vandal 42-yard line. And caught from behind after running it into Idaho territory. First down, Broncos. Still 10-35 in the first quarter. The Boise State moving close to scoring territory now. Hilly. Big rush. Hit and breaks loose. And throws it away and will get away with it because he threw it directly at the feet of Jared Housky. Great effort by Tony Hilly to avoid the big sack. Vandals, Vandals that time bringing six. You see him coming off the corners here. They like to loop the ends inside and then bring linebackers off the corner on the blitz situation. You see him being chased down by Ryan Phillips, but he gets the ball off to the feet of Jared House. And you saw him look right back at Mike Stanley to see what the referee's reaction was going to be. And, and that's a clearly legal play because that ball almost hit House in the feet at the end of the run. John L. Smith didn't like it. He held his arms off it. Open as if to say, what do we need for a penalty? But he didn't see Housky at the far side. Real tight corner being played on the Second and ten, Hildy. Now on the option, which we had anticipated after talking to the Bronco coaches, they had said they were going to use Hildy's athletic ability to try and get Hildy or Adams into the secondary. Now they have shown the option this year, but not as much as they might show it today, and they may show some different things out of the option. There's some uh, heavy involvement by Casey Adams in the option, and we have uh, seen Jared Housky's involvement in the running game already, and he may see some action in the option today. Third and six from the 39. Broncos lagging behind the Vandals in that category overall this season. With an important one here, trying to keep the drive alive in their second possession. Housky with the catch, bites off the first tackler, and he'll be grabbed and dragged down at the 35 yard line. He'll get forward progress. It would be a 52 yard field goal for Greg Erickson. Can't say uh, that there's much of a wind blowing. There is a draft blowing out of the north though and the Broncos will will they chance it? Don't see Danny Weeks or Greg Erickson out there right now. They may be in four down territory. Well, Joe O'Brien, the long snapper, is in. Hildy's in as well. Yeah, and they may try to draw the uh, Vandals offside. The long snapper, Joe O'Brien, is in. But still no Erickson. 
The uh, play clock counting now down. Now Hildy's going to have to take a timeout and a major foul up on the Broncos sideline. We'll break as uh, Erickson appeared like maybe he was lost. We'll be back. A reminder, toward the end of this afternoon's game, we'll be naming the Taco Time Player of the Game. Performance this good only at Taco Time. 8.55 left in the first quarter, and Greg Erickson now on the field to attempt a 52-yard field goal. He is 0 for 1 beyond 50. His longest is 47 yards. Hildy holds. Erickson's kick appears to have the distance, but it's a little low and left, and the Vandals will take over. At the, at the point of the kick, which is the 36-yard line. In good field position. That would have been five yards longer, as you mentioned, than Erickson's previous long, and it looks like that's about what he needed. Did I say point of the kick? Point of the snap. Right. Line of scrimmage. The so NFL the, is the point of the kick. That's right. Vandals yeah. back on offense now, trailing 7-0. Redshirt freshman Brian Brennan out of Lacey, Washington, running the Idaho offense with the triple wide receivers to the near side. And Sheridan May taking the handoff, trying to bounce it outside. Brian Smith drags him down, but May has five. And it took that to bring down Sheridan May. Great job on the left side, the weak side of the Vandal offensive line, Jim Mills and Jay Lukes. Vandal offensive line has been kind of a fraternity over the years. Uh, ever since Dennis Erickson arrived in 82, it's uh, it's been the key to their success, and it's a, an honor to be a Vandal offensive lineman. And, Showing it there at the 41, second and five. Idaho talked about the number of Broncos who returned their entire offensive line. Luke's the only senior among the Vandal starters. The rest are juniors and all will be back next year. And now penalty flags fly. The Broncos claiming motion and procedure against Idaho. We'll see what the officials determine. Broncos lined up in a six-man front. Brennan trying to check off. And there's your indication from Mike Stanley. It costs Idaho five. They're back to second and ten. The Broncos lined up in a six-man front. Brennan trying to check off. The offensive line not getting the word. It looked like Mike Hughes who moved and Travis Thompson came across to make the hit to force the flag. Now the Broncos in a dangerous defensive situation. Second and long anticipating the pass but wary of Sheridan May. Brennan will go to the air. Big rush, throws it away. Now, there was no eligible receiver. They, the officials will con confer, but I did not see an eligible receiver in that neighborhood. But they wave off the uh, play as incomplete, and Brennan escapes disaster, as did Hildy. They must rule that it was uh, close enough to Keith Neal, number 18, to warrant the simple call of incomplete pass. Joel Thomas now comes in with the play to replace Sheridan May for the Vandals on third and 10. And they don't give up much when he enters the game. May with uh, 1,263 yards and Thomas with 635. He's actually scored 11 touchdowns to May's nine. So very productive. Third and 10, the Vandals without a first down yet in the game. Brennan to throw and badly overthrown incomplete intended for Keith Neal. Idaho will punt again. Great job by Joel Thomas to keep the heat off of Brian Brennan, give him time, but good coverage once again by the Broncos secondary, and it's three and out once again for the University of Idaho. Eddie Howard comes on at JC All-America two years ago, averaging 39 yards a kick, but he's averaged 41 in the past several games. Sheridan May back to, or excuse me, Casey Adams back to await the Ooh. kick, and this is a boomer. Fair catch called, he lets the ball roll, and it will go out at the one foot line. So the Vandals will have the Broncos backed up to their goal line when we return. Boise State back on offense, backed up to their goal line after a great punt by Eddie Howard, who dropped it inside the 20 for the 13th time this season. 7-0, Broncos lead, seven and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Unbelievably, at that point, Idaho without a first down in this game. 
But this staff is known for great adjustments, and they're adjusting as we speak, you can bet. Offensive coordinator Art Valero, a former Bronco on the uh, 1980 National Championship team. Tony Hildy calling signals now at his goal line. Broncos leading 7-0. Casey Adams hit at the line of scrimmage. Gain of a yard at most. Broncos is trying to get it out of trouble, but they have shown that they will throw from this position on the field. They are not shy about it at all. Well, the big thing they would like to accomplish here is a first down or two to avoid losing serious ground in the battle of field position. They lost some field position when Erickson missed the field goal, but were able to hold. Now they got to get out, out of this hole offensively. Adams stacked up in the eye formation behind Del Graven. Graven takes it ahead to the four, and it'll be third and seven. Yeah, the Broncos trying to lull the Vandals to sleep here. The dive on the option look by Tony Hildy to Del Graven. Graven, who rejoined the team in time for the Idaho State game after sitting out the first six games of the season, has become a big part of this Bronco offense. Now here's a new look, a stack. This is a, a flip, and this should go to Casey Adams. Hildy from his end zone. Got his man, first down, Broncos. Ball fumbled out of bounds and now ruled incomplete. No, he, he's ruling that the clock out of Right. Stepped out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Good enough for a first down. It was a flip play that the Broncos put in, an extra shift. Jared Housky makes the catch, and the ball was punched out, and actually the ball rolled out of bounds. A very fortunate turn of events for the Broncos. The primary receiver on that play, I believe, was Casey Adams if they got the right matchup, but they did not. So the Broncos get a fresh set of downs after advancing the ball to the 12-yard line. Adams looking for help. There is none, but he fat, battled his way forward and then had the ball jarred loose, and well, Idaho down. No, he's down like contact, and the Vandals are furious. John L. Smith a third of the way out to the play. Boy, it looked like Casey was still standing when well, that ball hit the turf. They've called for physic, uh, for a medical help. Casey's still down, apparently. Adams gained five, but is still down after a really punishing hit. And that will bring Willie Bowens on to replace him. Willie Bowens has been a late-game replacement for Casey Adams, but not in a game like this. Let's see if we can see where the ball comes out. They ruled the ball, they ruled Casey down at that point. We couldn't tell from that angle whether or not the ball was out. They were flexing Adams' left ankle, and uh, he walks off now as John L. Smith uh, expands his vocal capacity just a little bit. John L. said last night, we were visiting with him after the news here in Boise, that uh, for the first time ever, his dad has gone to the sidelines with him, come over from Idaho Falls to watch the game, First time his dad's been on the sideline with him. And Pokey's uh, mom is down from Missoula as well. Family fun here at Bronco Stadium. 5.40 left first quarter. Hildy rolling into trouble. And now throws it away out of bounds. Penalty flag at the 19-yard uh, line away on the opposite side of the field from the action. Duke Garrett complaining that he was held and they're pointing at Keith Jeffrey. As we see today's officials, uh, referee Mike Stanley, Paul Austin, Dennis Peterson, Ren Edwards, Lawrence Farina, and Robert Taylor. And they make the up from Mike Stanley holding against Boise State. So from second and five, they'll move backward. Bronco offense got out of one hole, but is short circuiting here after the big first down by Jared Housky. Housky fumbled out of bounds. KC fumbled after he went down and was injured. And now a holding call. Vandals averaging 72 yards a game on penalties. The Broncos 56. It would be third down and six should the Vandals decline. So a long discussion taking place with Captain Josh Redder. I've got a hold on the offense, second down. 
So the Vandals take the yardage and push Boise State back to its six-yard line. Broncos must get to the 22 for a first down. Tony Hildy on the day, six of seven, 79 yards, and the one touchdown as Boise State leads it here, seven to nothing with five and a half minutes left in the first period. We're having a, a problem in our truck with our graphics, so we'll try to compensate for that. Come right up here right now. Lee Schrack coming in, along with Jared Housky on this second and long. We'll see what the Vandals do in terms of pressure. It's like Garrett and Fetter may come on this play. Broncos with four wide receivers. Hilly with the quick toss. Got a keepy out to the 15-yard line, a gain of 10. And it'll be third at about seven. He'd be running a slant as both Fetter and Garrett blitzed on the play. A six-man blitz picked up well by the Broncos. Martez Benis getting Duke Garrett. The Vandals, or rather the Broncos, decided not to get it all back in one play, and that will leave them with a third and seven. In a packed, packed Broncos stadium. Del Graven, the lone setback now behind uh, Tony Hildy. <laughs> throw going outside to Akibi. Got him with the 25 35, it is. And first down, Broncos. That's the thing that this Boise State team does it makes plays. That was a great job by Ryan Akibi and a great job by Del Graven to pick up the blitzing Duke Garrett on the left corner. A great corner back, you see, block. You see Del Graven keeping Duke Garrett away as the rush comes in from the other side. It almost became a fade pattern as Akibi was running against Montrell, or rather, uh, Cedric West. And the Broncos have the first down at 36, a drive that started at the BSU one-yard line. 109 yards passing now for Tony Hill. 435 left first quarter. First down, Broncos at the 36. Hilly going deep to the near side for Akibi. It's a flutter ball and pass interference going to be ruled against Derek Smith. They wanted to get Akibi deep today on Derek Smith, the strong safety if they could. And the, the Vandals trying to get their wide receivers, fleet wide receivers on the Broncos safeties as well. There is virtually no wind here, but Hildy did not get much on that ball. It fluttered. Akibi came back for it. And I think you're going to find Derek Smith called for impeding Yakibi's progress. I've got an illegal formation. I only have six men on the line on the offense. I got pass interference on the defense. They offset. First down again. <laughs> so we'll take a look here. From the ground, we can't get a look at the illegal procedure, the six men on the line, but you see the flutter ball coming down and Akibi trying to get in position for it and he's interfered with by Derek Smith. So nothing ventured, nothing gained, and it remains first and 10. Casey Adams back in the game for the Broncos. They line up initially here in the eye. Very unusual, although Graven may shift. on the option, cuts in, and drag down after gaining just a yard to the 37. Well, they've tried the option twice now, and Hildy has gained six yards on the two carries. Vandals have reacted well. Actually, no gain on the play, so he's gained only four yards on the two carries. Coming into the game, Hildy with 225 yards rushing and five touchdowns, including the big one in the fourth quarter last week up in the Mud bog known as Woodward Stadium in Cheney. They actually do give him a yard at the 37, but it's still second and long, second and nine. That's uh, Brian Akibi in motion. Hildy with the play fake. Oh my, got Casey Adams behind the defense. 50, 40, 35, 30, and out of bounds at the Vandal 19 yard line. Always had a great call against the Blitz. The that brings them to their feet here at Bronco Stadium. The tendency by the Vandals in this situation is to blitz. They got Casey on the corner. Hildy needed only to loop it out there. It's a foot race, and Adams wins this one. 
the angle from the opposite side of the field allows Jeff Hill to catch him and knock him out of bounds, saving a touchdown, but the Broncos back inside the red zone, the scoring territory where they've been so productive all season. 80 yards so far on this drive by Boise State. It started at the one. A tremendous first quarter for Boise State on both sides of the football. First down from the Vandal 19. Hilly with a quarterback keeper to the 15 and fighting for extra yardage to the 14. last week big sky offensive player of the week his first ever and so deserved as the sophomore from pendleton breaks the tackle of ryan phillips and that is no easy task john l smith feels that uh, ryan phillips will be better than jeff robinson before he's done and jeff robinson's shoes were the big ones filled last year by ryan phillips just a sophomore out of auburn washington a gain of five by hildy on first down safe play with which he scored the game winner last week at Eastern Washington. He dropped the snap from center there as he was appearing to fake the pitch. Wanted to pull it back in, was faking the toss to Willie Bowens, and uh, the Broncos will uh, lose two and have third down at the 16. It looked like it was going to be a bump flat with a naked boot to the left, but uh, he'll be very fortunate to have the ball bounce back up into the basket. Reminder, we've got NFL action for you here tomorrow. NFL Live from NBC at 10.30. Cleveland and Kansas City at 11 a.m. Here, third down and seven for the Broncos from the Vandal 16-yard line. Tony Hilde down the middle. Got to keep him inside the five. First and goal. Well, that was good coverage by Cedric West. That thing had to be thrown right on the button. And it was. Hildy and Akibi have been the story here in the first quarter. Exactly two minutes left as the Broncos have first and goal from the three. Hildy ropes it in there. You see great pocket. A great cup formed by the Boise State offensive line. And Hildy and Akibi have been a story here in the early going for the Broncos. Adams now with Graven behind Hildy. Broncos showing a power backfield with double tight ends. The toss to Adams had a notion of running for the corner. He'll lose about six. Josh Fetter and Ryan Phillips making the stop for the Vandals. Josh Fetter, a great story. Blew an ankle on the second play of the opener two years ago. Couldn't get his position back from Jason Schelt. He became the man this year when Schelt went down in the second game. And Fetter makes a great shoestring grab of Casey Adams and a big loss on the play. Forward progress for Adams to the seven, but still a loss of four. It is now second and goal, and many times with a team that uses the pass as well as Boise State, you can get too close to the goal line to be effective. They have more room to run routes now. That's a Kibi in motion. Hilding with a straight drop. Going to the near side, overthrows a wide open Casey Adams. Hildy had a big rush and had to deliver it perhaps a little off balance. And Vandal showing a little bit different look to the blitz that time. Duke Garrett coming, and Tommy Connect was the man who forced the play. The transfer from Stanford, who came to Idaho to play quarterback and ended up at linebacker where he had been at Stanford. You see Duke Garrett picked up, but Tommy Connect hurries that throw and puts the Broncos in a third down situation. Third and goal from the Vandal seven. Greg Erickson has already missed once, ending his streak of 10 straight field goals. It was a 52-yard attempt. Hildy hands to Adams, who tosses wide to Bowens. And Bowens driven out of bounds at the four. That's a new wrinkle. That was one of the new wrinkles that they put in the option attack this week. That's the KC option. With Bowens as the trailing back. Doesn't quite do it, and uh, Greg Erickson will have quite an angle here. He will have to hook it. Here you see Adams, and a very good job of Derek Smith to read that and make the stop. Derek Smith, Jr. out of New Orleans. So this will be little more than a field goal, but it will be a, a rather severe angle from the near hash mark. Out of Hildy's hold, Joe O'Brien, the long snapper, Greg Erickson trying to give the Broncos a 10-0 lead. And does. 42 seconds 
left in the first quarter, and the Broncos have built their lead to 10 over the Vandals in a showdown for the Big Sky Championship. Well, it looks like a, a simple field goal there as we await the cannon. It should be any moment now. Uh, but the, the key for the Broncos in, in making a statement in this game is the fact that it started on the one-yard line, that great Eddie Howard punt going out at the one-yard line, and the Broncos in a big hole twice had to convert third down plays and moved all the way down to the Vandal four. They got 95 yards on that drive. So it's a bigger three points than it might appear. What a whale of a first quarter. It seems like we've been playing all day. John L. Smith winning his coach in University of Idaho history. Been here since 1989. First Idaho coach since Skip Staley in the 50s to stay more than four years. Staley was at Idaho for eight years. And part of the great tradition started by Dennis Erickson in 1982 and followed so capably by now California coach Keith Gilbertson. 15 plays, 95 yards. Six minutes, 44 seconds clicked off the clock. And the 21-yard field goal by Greg Erickson has the Broncos up 10 to nothing. I guess if you're a Bronco fan, the best thing about that drive is it ate up a lot of clock time keeping the Vandal offense off the field. They'll be back now after Greg Erickson's kickoff to the far side. And it is fielded by Dwight McKenzie about the 10. It finally runs out of bounds. Penalty flag thrown near the conclusion of that play outside the 20. I don't think it was a late hit. Josh Fetter getting up very slowly. Fetter, of course, uh, has an ankle injury that goes way back. Two years, he appears to be okay now. Fetter, the senior from Buckley, Washington, he leaves the field, and now we'll see what the uh, penalty call is as the officials discuss it at the 23-yard line. Broncos walking back. And now the Vandals walking back. This is almost like gunfighters with 220 paces between them. It's been that way. Penalty will be against the Vandals. It's a hold. On the reach. First down. So it'll move them from the 23-yard line back inside the 15. Ball marked at the 12. You will now begin to hear a lot of noise from that north end zone as the Zonies, they love to be referred to as, try to uh, create some havoc for the Idaho offense. The thing you'll find in that north end zone on this particular day is a lot of uh, yellow and black pom-poms. And they're on both sides making noise now. Chair to May on first down, out to the 15, perhaps the 16-yard line. A gain of close to four. Broncos staying in their ba base defense. Matt West in the right end making that stop. Idaho averaging 228 yards a game on the ground. That's number one in the big sky. 522 yards in total offense. 44.8 points per game. And that... Two, those two numbers are number one in the Big Sky Conference. But with five seconds left in the opening quarter, they have yet to make a first down. Keith Neal hit as he catches it. And down at the 19, it'll be third and three when we come back to start the second quarter. Ten to nothing as we start the second period. Tom Scott and Larry Manili at Broncos Stadium. Sold out Broncos Stadium. The 24th renewal of the Bronco Vandal rivalry. 12 game winning streak by the Idaho Vandals on the line here. They lead the series 14-8 with one tie back in 1975. Tony Knapp's last game as uh, in the regular season as Bronco coach. And in fact, Boise State won eight of the first 11. Idaho's won the last 12 to lead the series 14-8. Unofficially total yards to this point in the first quarter, 221 for Boise State, 14 for Idaho. They've not made a first down in the game, the Vandals, and they have third and three here as Brian Brennan adjusts. And now goes down the middle, and Gary drops the ball, and Idaho will punt again. Kyle Gary had Rashid Gale beaten for a touchdown and dropped the ball. Well, you won't see that very often from Kyle Gary, 63 catches coming in. The Vandal offensive line doing a great job of picking up a six-man 
Bronco Rush, and Rasheed Gale would have had a tough time catching the senior out of Portland. Eddie Howard on to kick it away. He has a long of 60 coming into the game. Casey Adams awaiting the punt at the Bronco 40. Adams averaging 11.3. He has returned one 79 yards for a touchdown. A beautiful spiral. Adams from the 36 to the 40, 45, 50, into Vandal territory. Casey Adams will score. A penalty flag at the 50-yard line. Holding against Boise State will bring it back. And considering where the flag was dropped, that very well could have been what sprung Casey Adams. Immediately, the official who threw the flag indicated to the Broncos' sideline exactly his call. No question about it, holding against the Broncos. It he, was it was far too easy for Casey Adams to get through that first wave of Vandals. And, and that'll bring it back, an electrifying moment nonetheless as Casey Adams raced down the far sideline to the end zone, and this crowd erupted as one. I think we've uh, identified the play at the point of the foul and uh, after Mike Stanley gives us the official indication we'll try and give you another look at it. I've got a push in the back. Team first down. Okay, let's take another look now. The call was a, a push in the back. Watch top right of your screen. There's a nice block by Joe Bryan. Sheridan May being held there and that's where the call is and that is uh, one of the blocks or holds that sprung Casey Adams. So a, a good call. Ball now after the 10-yard penalty back to the Vandal 37-yard line. So Boise State with a serious penalty there that sets that situation back dramatically. The Broncos were going to have a commanding lead in this game. Now they've got first down from their 37-yard line very early second quarter. to the near side, just beyond the fingertips of Casey Adams and incomplete. Adams in a foot race that time with Ryan Phillips. Here's a look at the numbers for that first quarter, and you can see the dominance of Boise State to this point. 221 to 14 in total offense. No turnovers yet. The Broncos kind of rode on, on the edge there. 11 yards rushing for Idaho, including uh, Sheridan May's numbers. 54 yards for the Broncos. A lot of that on a big run by Casey Adams on the fake reverse. 167 yards passing for Tony Hildy in the first quarter. Second and 10 now from the Bronco 37-yard line. Housky the motion man. Hildy in the middle screen to a Kiwi. Has blockers. Not enough room to get through there. He's caught by pursuit from the far side and a gain of about four to jo the 41-yard line. Josh Fetter coming across to make the stop. The middle screen set up so well that the uh, the screen itself, the screen of blue, really clogged the lanes for Ryan Akibi. He had no seam. He had to try to take it outside. And Josh Fetter there to make the stop. Akibi limping after the hit by Fetter. Third and six Broncos from their 41-yard line. Idaho trying to make a stand and, and turn the momentum, which clearly favors Boise State at this point. Hildy going outside to Casey Adams. Ball thrown behind him and incomplete, and Danny Weeks will be on to punt it away for Boise State. Broncos trying to get the ball outside to Casey Adams. Have done so a couple of times effectively today. Weeks, a senior out of Capitol High here in Boise, averaging 40.8, his longest 58 yards. And the Broncos would dearly love to have one just about that range right now. They are 59 yards from the Idaho end zone. Danny Weeks has punted more than any punter in Boise State history. A good stat, bad stat type of deal, but he's having the finest season of his four-year career this year. Picks up the uh, low snap and then drives it over Kyle Gary's head. Ball hits at the one-yard line and skips into the end zone. Penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. And we'll wait for an indication on the call as to whether or not the Broncos, and in fact, they might even elect to kick it again if the penalty is against Idaho. Illegal procedure against Boise State. I don't think uh, the Vandals will want the Broncos to kick this again. Much better chance of uh, Weeks planting it down there. 
inside the 10 if he gets a second chance. Well, he drove that ball over Kyle Gary's head, and in fact, that's Danny Week's longest punt of the season, 59 yards into the end zone. Vandals will decline as Sheridan May goes back to the huddle. Mike Stanley. One final check to make sure that the ball is indeed at the 20-yard line. I had an illegal formation, only six men on the line. On the offense, it has been declined. First down, we have a TV timeout. And so we'll send you away for a couple of minutes while everybody regroups. 13-38 left first half. Broncos dominant so far. Thanksgiving Day here on Channel 7. A very early start for the Today Show. You'll see it live from New York and Idaho at sunrise. The Macy's Parade and football as well. We're back to live action with the Vandals. First down from their 20. Sheridan make gaining four. Vandals without a first down through the first quarter and the opening minute and a half of this second period. Good gain on first down as the Vandals can go short now on second and six. Sheridan May trying to become the first to ever lead the big sky in rushing three years in a row. He and Casey Adams in a battle, of course, a penalty flag and perhaps uh, motion against Idaho. Didn't look like everybody was set. That ball snapped awfully quickly and players on both sides of the ball are jumping around as it snapped. Left side of the uh, Vandal offensive line did not appear to be set. So the Vandals causing themselves as many problems as the Broncos have so far. Mistakes. And after the nice gain by Sheridan May, they have second and 11. On the Chile scoreboard, Montana trying to ensure a playoff berth in the rival game with Montana State in Missoula. Penn State crushing Northwestern, as you might expect. Miami all over Temple. Second and 11 as the crowd begins to get into it. Brennan trying to check off as the Boise State alternating cheer goes. Smith blitzes right into the ball carrier and May goes down at the line of scrimmage in the arms of Chris Wing. Uh, you, you mentioned the key, Brian Smith shooting the gap and he shot the gap that Sheridan May had chosen. That bounce May back and into the arms of Chris Wing in there on the nickel. Here you see Smith fighting off his block Closing that gap, never actually hit May, but that slowed May enough to allow Wing to come off the end. No gain, and third and 11 for the Vandals, who have yet to make a first down. Approaching 12 minutes left in the second quarter. Chris Cook showing blitz off the left corner. Brian Brennan to throw. Going deep down the middle, Rashid Gale in coverage. And uh, that ball harmlessly incomplete. Idaho will punt again. Gale asking for a flag on that one and then a few words to Kyle Gary as he a, heads back to the huddle. A thunderous ovation for the Bronco defenders as they've done their job again. The Broncos almost scored on their last. You see Art Valero on the uh, sideline, the Vandal offensive coordinator. Broncos uh, had a touchdown on their last punt return. Were it not for a holding call, now they get another chance. Eddie Howard kicking to Sheridan May. This a spiral that is very short and will go out of bounds at the Vandal 44-yard line. So everything going wrong for the Vandals. 11.51 left with Idaho on defense when we come back. This is a day of great celebration around the Boise Valley as Idaho and Boise State fans uh, party hard. But uh, a very serious aspect of that is the problem of drunk driving in Idaho. Uh, John Dobkin will address that in a three-part series here on Channel 7 during the evening and night reports on News Center 7. And we surely encourage all of you who are partying today to designate a driver. Tony Hildy on the bootleg left. A penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Hildy breaks containment inside the 30, but that one likely will come back. At the line of scrimmage, the penalty flag is generally a violation against the offense. Hildy showing great athletic ability there. He just outran defenders. Absolutely. 
And now there is cheering from the Broncos sideline. So oh, perhaps the I band will even lined up in the neutral zone. So there were seven men on the line of scrimmage. Broncos have called, been called twice for six. And uh, I didn't see any movement. It is offside against Idaho. Somebody in the Vandal line was in the neutral zone with a helmet across the football, and that's the uh, area of no man's land. So Hildy's run will stand, and the Broncos have a first down inside the 29-yard line. Decline. First down. Last play is what you call a quarterback keeper. All the way. The fake to Casey Adams and the roll left by Tony Hildy. Broncos shift out of the eye. Dan Shock and Zimmerman both in the game as tight ends now. Hey, the Adams in Idaho, you're going to be Adams and a loss of two and a half, almost three yards. That one not blocked well, <laughs> obviously, as Ryan Phillips, the leader of that Bandle defensive line, makes the stop on Adams. Broncos averaging 175 yards rushing, number two in the big sky behind Idaho, but a, a almost, a, well, more than 50 yards a game back of the number one Vandals in rushing the football. The Vandals, number one in the conference against the run, allowing just 59 yards a game. The Broncos had nearly that many in the opening 15 minutes with 54 yards rushing. Second and 13 from the 32. Tony Hilly gets a big rush, goes short. Adams dodging tacklers, they'll lose another yard. And it'll be third and long. A good call, but read well by the Vandals. Josh Fetter right on top of things as usual. Vandals were bringing everybody, looping the ends inside. A little more look at the uh, Chile scoreboard, third-ranked Florida State. At Vanderbilt, up 10 at halftime. Fifth-ranked Miami now has increased its lead at Temple. Colorado, comfortable in the first quarter at home over Iowa State. And A&M up on TCU. Third and 14 from the Vandal, 33. Get there, get there, get there. Hilly steps inside, fights off the tackler, and then goes down after regaining the line of scrimmage, but only just barely. And it's Ryan Phillips once again for Idaho with help from Tommy Connect and Josh Fetter. And Pokey Allen not fooling around with opportunities today. Greg Erickson quickly on now and will attempt a 51-yard field goal out of Tony Hildy's hold. Ryan Phillips fighting off the block of Jordy LePage to make the stop. Broncos got what they wanted in getting Hildy outside, but there were too many white shirts there. Erickson has made from 20 and missed from 52. This from 51, it looks to be short and wide left. So Erickson, who came in having made 10 straight, is one of three missing a chance to build on a 10-point Bronco lead with 9.29 left in the half. There, Benelli and Tom Scott with you. 9.29 left second quarter. Broncos 10, Vandals nothing in the showdown for the Big Sky Championship. To the winner, an automatic berth in next week's Division I AA playoffs and an almost guaranteed home field advantage for the opening round of the one AA playoffs next week. Brian Brennan on first down will run for the first first down of the day for the Vandal offense across the 50-yard line. Out of bounds at the Bronco 38. The near side completely exposed for Brian Brennan, and he runs for the first down. And Brian has probably been coached to watch for that as Kyle, Gary, Keith, Neal, Dwight McKenzie lined up trips to the right. They were all covered. Brennan turns around. The Broncos had followed, and there was nobody on the left side of the field. So Brennan gets it all the way down to the Bronco 38-yard line and the first Vandal first down of the day. Sheridan May trying to kick it outside to the 35, wrapped up and driven out of bounds by Chris Cook, but a gain of five. And it looks like you're containing him until you look at the yardage, and it's five yards, five yards. First down after first down. Kansas State up on Oklahoma State in the second. We'll run through the top 25. Oregon and Oregon State just underway. The Ducks trying to win their first Rose Bowl berth since 1957. If they lose and USC can beat UCLA, the Trojans will go. 
Sheridan oh. May on second down for close to first down yardage as he falls forward inside the 39. I think he's about a half yard short. And that'll be third and, uh, and that for a Vandal first down. Stephon Reed and Travis Thompson on the stop. May helps Thompson back to his feet. Quiet leader on this Vandal offense. Amazing what he did three years ago as a defensive back, returning two interceptions for touchdowns. We have an official's timeout. Welcome to, to all the fans up in uh, northern Idaho watching on KUID. Get a chance to listen now to the Vandal Band. And uh, hello to uh, University of Idaho President uh, Dr. Elizabeth Zinzer, who is home with the flu, had hoped to be here cheering on her team in person. And we wish her a speedy recovery. Very classy lady, done a terrific job up there. On the scoreboard, Montana opening it up now on Montana State. The uh, Grizzlies going beaten here two weeks ago, lost last week at Idaho State, and they do not want to go into the playoffs on a three-game losing streak. And, in fact, if they were to lose a third one today, they might not make it. Here's a shocker. Ohio State finally gets John Cooper a win over Michigan, probably saving his job. Third and less than a yard. Sheridan May has the first down to the 36-yard line. May diving over the top. 8.45 left in the first half. Second first down of the day. And that's the first one that, that they've really worked for. The, the <laughs> first one came on one big long run by... Brian Brennan, but uh, Sheridan May earned that one in three carries. Vandal's trying to sustain a drive now. May hit it the, actually behind the line of scrimmage. Joel Thomas, I believe it was, drives forward. Matt Weston uh, stops him, but not before a gain of about four. And you're correct, it is Thomas. Vandal's starting to work on the middle now behind the guards, Jay Lukes and Mike Hughes, and center Eric Johnson. We'll give Thomas a, an extended look now. Play fake to Thomas. Brennan rolling, has room, 20 to the 16. Penalty flag at the end of the play. And it looks like Kyle Gary may get called for a blocking violation out there because the flag was thrown right at him. That would hurt as Brennan was right at the first down marker. He marked his forward progress actually to the 18. The ball popped out and eventually went out of bounds before it was recovered, but it is holding against Idaho. You see defensive coordinator Tom Mason flanked by defensive line coach Pete Kwiatkowski. Tom Mason called a brilliant game against the University of Montana in the Broncos' last big showdown here. That being against Montana. 38 to 14 on November 5th. And I asked him earlier in the week, well, what do you think? Have you got a plan? And he said, I think I got too many plans. What we need to do is just turn these kids loose and see what they can do. And I think John L. Smith felt the same way. Let's see what Mason throws at us and we'll see how we adjust. White McKenzie comes on with the play for the Vandals. A 10 yard penalty moves it back to the Bronco 27. It is second and 11, and nothing there. On what looked to be a passing down, the Vandals try to cross it up by taking Sheridan May. Bottom of the pile, number 14, Joe O'Brien. Keep Joe. Walk Green there as well, along with Brian Smith. It'll be third and 11 from the Bronco 27. Keith Walk Green, uh, the first man to reach him before Joe coming off the corner on a blitz. Brennan now to throw, big rush, and he's going down at the 39-yard line. No chance that time. The Broncos bringing six. Actually, they brought seven. Cliff Robinson, Chris Cook, Stephon Reed were the extra guys. Keith walked green in there. Joe O'Brien, they brought the house. They had man coverage on trips to the left and brought the house. Here comes Robinson, the first man to get there. Walk green in on it. Joe O'Brien in on it. 
and the holding penalty uh, really is severe because the Vandals were in field goal territory, but now Eddie Howard must punt on fourth down. Broncos have nobody back to this one. A high kick that will land in the end zone, and the Broncos will have it at the 20. So another terrific stand by the Bronco defense, but again, mistakes costing the Vandals, who remain scoreless with 6.24 left in the half. Back at Broncos Stadium where the Broncos lead the Vandals 10 to nothing, 624 left in the half. Time of possession solidly in favor of Boise State, 15-15 for the Broncos, 8 minutes, 21 seconds for the Vandals. Brian Brennan, one of six for three yards at this point in the game. And the Vandals with just two first downs. Hilly now operating the Bronco offense, going deep to the near side for Casey Adams, makes the catch at the 49-yard line right in front of the Vandal bench. Well, great players make big plays in big games, and so far the Broncos have owned that category. The Vandals certainly have their share of great players awaiting their moment. Trying to sell the pump fake was Tony Hildy. Coverage by Jeff Hill as the Broncos move it out to the 49. Six. Casey Adams to be a big part of today's game plan in the running lanes and the passing lanes. 6-17 left in the half. The Broncos have owned the first. And half the second quarter. Casey Adams with a quick hitter into the secondary to the 38-yard line. A great job up front. Martez Venus, Alex Coyos, Keith Jeffrey, the center Paul Kaufman, Jordy LePayne. Here you see it develop from the end zone, the cross block by Alex Toyos and KC right behind Toyos into the secondary. Toyos injured early in the week, missed practice on Wednesday, but was not going to miss this game. But Casey Adams needed to make up almost 100 yards on Sheridan May to win the Big Sky rushing title, but he was quick to say early in the week, I'll take the ring if we can win the game and he can have the individual on. First down Broncos, Vandal 39. Clock running, 5.45 and a half. Hilly will use a timeout. The Broncos will have one remaining in this half. They used one earlier on confusion before a missed field goal attempt. Hilde calling that timeout saved five yards because the clock was at one. Every yard precious, precious today for Boise State. As you see, John L. Smith, who has won the last five games of this 12-game streak. Dennis Erickson got the first four, then three by Keith Gilbertson. As you see, a very, <laughs> very reserved sign in the south end zone. A KTV B sign down the left side, and that's a creative. He wouldn't have gotten on the air if it didn't say KTVB, I'll tell you. <laughs> There's Pokey Allen kind of peeking into the offensive huddle. Tony Hildy with 199 yards in the first half here on 13 of 17 and a touchdown. He has now had the second best passing day or passing year in Boise State history. 26 48 if my math is correct, for Tony Hildy. After the game here on Channel 7 today, we will, if needed, join entertainment tonight in progress and the New Center 7 weekend report at 5, followed by NBC Nightly News taking you into prime time. First and 10 Broncos from the Vandal 39-yard line. Just under six minutes left in the half. Hildy had to throw it. Off balance, and it was thrown behind Jared Housky and incomplete. It'll be second down. And Ryan Phillips, who's been all over the field, especially in the second period here for the Vandals, may have gotten a hand on that one as well. See Al Borges sending Willie Bowens in with a formation and a play. It's, it's never just a play. It's always a formation and a play. And you can see that uh, Ryan Akibi limps off. Joe Aliotti pulling forward today for his cousin, Al Borges. <laughs> Folks were not at all aware of that relationship until Al announced it at the Bronco luncheon on the our sisters. Hildy checking off now. Play clock at four. Going deep. Housky can't make the catch. No call. It'll be third down. Bronco coaches exploding on the sideline. Wanted the interference, but looked like pretty good coverage. 
down there in defense by Derek Smith. Throwing the fade as Derek Smith playing Houski and Houski trying to play the ball. Hildy checked off to this when he had single coverage Houski against Derek Smith. Or rather Cedric West, I'm sorry, Cedric West on the coverage. Third and 10 now for the Broncos from the 39 yard line. They are just outside Greg Erickson's field goal range. That's been proven twice today. <laughs> just barely. Now the shift. And in motion is Houski. He'll be rolling to the near side. Got the ball away to Bernie Zimmerman, the Idaho transfer, who appears to have the first down. Now we'll see what kind of a spot he gets. He got a spot to the 29, so it'll be about a half yard short. And the fans want the Broncos to go. And the Broncos want to go. We'll see what Al Borges calls here. Well, you know how Al Borges feels about Del Graven in the backfield and an offense uh, with as many options as they've got. We just talked about Joe Aliotti. That was a Joe Aliotti type play, a little shot put out to Bernie Zimmerman. Started his career in Moscow, but never lasted until the regular season. Walked on at Boise State last spring. His experience at Idaho was before the 1991 season. John Miller, number 53, the sophomore out of Seattle at right tackle, brought the play in, and it's third down now for the Broncos, or excuse me, fourth down and one. Less than a yard, actually. And contact as a Vandal appeared to jump offside. That would be a first down if it is against Idaho. Now the question, was he drawn off by the Broncos? Hildy makes the call for you. Looked like Tim Wilson making contact with the center, Paul Kaufman, and Tim Wilson comes off the field for Idaho. Tim Wilson, the starting left tackle. No movement. Might have been a cadence thing there by Tony Hildy. Right into Paul Kaufman, and the Broncos lure the Vandals into an offside penalty that gives the Broncos a first down at the 24. 4.55 left in the half. There's the Adams. Cuts inside the block by Martez Venus, and Adams down to the 16-yard line. Well, that was a key block thrown by Martez Venus, struggling to hold it just long enough for KC to cut inside, and he was successful. Broncos living dangerously today. That was the fake reverse. At least they showed it. Didn't really give it much of a fake. But there you see the block by Martez Benes on defensive end Barry Mitchell. And Ryan Phillips coming from the far side of the field to make the tackle. Second down and two from the Vandal 16. Make no mistake, this is a huge possession for both teams. Del Graven fighting his way to the 15. Gain of less than a yard. Del Graven, the powerful running back out of Vail. He's working the front desk at Channel 7 tomorrow morning. <laughs> Part-time employee. Keeps us in touch with some of the uh, gossip around the locker room. <laughs> Clock under four minutes in the half now. The Broncos with third and one from just outside the 15. Graven, you see him there, number 38. 6'2", 237 pounds. Awfully big for a big sky fullback. Adams and Graven now behind Tony Hildy. and will have to come on and attempt his fourth field goal of the day. I don't think they'll gamble here. And Greg being one for three today, Erickson going to be very focused on this kick. He's made one from angle left, the 21 yarder. Now he's got to go angle right on the right hash. Ball will be spotted at the 23, so it'll be a 33 yard attempt. And in fact, he, he has missed twice today from beyond 50, but inside 40, Erickson is 7 of 7. 33-yard attempt. Got it! Yeah. And he's now 8 of 8, and the Broncos, with 2.51 left in the half, have built their lead to 13 points. Tom Scott headed for the sideline, and as he heads into the locker room, Pokey Allen will share his thoughts, and you'll also hear from John L. Smith, who will stop for a quick interview as the Vandals return from the locker room near the conclusion of halftime. 
Bronco wrestling coach Mike Young in the Santa hat, pulling cable today on the headset for his buddy, Pokey Allen. Also coming up at halftime, Ed Bining with uh, scores from around the country. A lot of traditional rivalries today. And a recap as well of the high school state championship games. And at this time, in advance of that, may I pass along congratulations to the Bishop Kelly Knights, who concluded a perfect season last night, winning 35-13 over Snake River High in the A2 state championship game at the Holt Arena in Pocatello. The Knights 12-0 winning their first championship and congratulations to Tim Brennan and his guys who have had a whale of an experience. Greg Erickson gives the Broncos a 13-0 lead with 2.51 left. And now he will kick it off. Montrell Williams and White McKenzie waiting deep. It'll be Williams from the five to the near side, 15-20 to the 25 and then hit from behind and down by Tim Foley at the 33 yard line. So the Vandals will have the ball there with 2.43 left to work with here in the first half. Trailing by 13. sort of an anxious look perhaps on the face of John L. Smith as he glances at the scoreboard clock knowing it would really help his team if they can generate some offense and get some points in the closing stages of this half. Brian Brennan now throws, pass caught. First down, the completion to Dwight McKenzie out to the 45-yard line. Vandals uh, only fifth in the big sky in passing yardage, 294 per game. And that's uh, very much against what has been their custom over the last few years. First down now. Chris Wing with a big rush, a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. And both Wing and uh, Brian Brennan uh, called a halt well before the whistles blew as they saw the flags come. And it appears that the Vandals are guilty foul. of the procedure. Dead Offense. So the Vandals miscues here in the first half have really caused them problems. Kept their offense bottled up as much as the Bronco defense has. First and 15 now from the Idaho 40 yard line. Brennan straight back coming up near side under throws McKenzie who makes the catch at the 50 and it's uh, going to be ruled a completion. They got 10 of it back second and five and a short five at that as the ball is just into Bronco territory. Even another look the Broncos tried to claim that one had skipped in. But it looked like uh, McKenzie made a pretty good catch. He came in as the second leading receiver on this Vandal team with 36 catches in 10 games. The leader, Kyle Gary, had 63. Broncos blitz, and Brian Smith drags Brennan down inside the 45. A big loss of almost eight yards. Give you another look now as Brennan never had a chance. Smith was back there even before Brennan set up and looked upfield. Timeout on the uh, field. Vandals using the timeout. They have two remaining, and they would dearly love to get something out of this possession, but they're now faced with third and 10 from the 45. One twenty-six left. One twenty-six left. Vandals with two timeouts, trailing thirteen nothing. But a big third and ten ahead of them.
from the Vandal 45-yard line. Brian Brennan brings him up. And the crowd back into it. And a quick snap. Brennan to throw, hit from behind, and driven down by Stephon Reed, the senior out of Kamloops, British Columbia, by way of Butte Junior College in Durham, California. Broncos blitzing again, and they mixed it up with some brilliant defensive calls. And uh, Chris Wing hit him low, and Reed finished him high. So Eddie Howard will have to kick it away. And uh, less than a minute left now. Clock at 55 and running as Howard kicks to Casey Adams. A high spiral. Adams will fair catch it at the 24-yard line. 47 seconds left as the Bronco offense returns to finish a half they have dominated. Forty-seven seconds left. The Broncos with one timeout themselves. And if they want to get ambitious and throw the ball deep, they've got 47 seconds. This has not been a conservative offensive coaching staff this year or through their career. Portland State is now here. The handoff very conservatively to Casey Adams, who loses about three. Well, in this situation with the 13-point lead, Larry, they may go a little conservative here. And that's exactly what they did. And in fact, make it a four-yard loss back to the 20. Clock running now with 26 seconds. And every indication would be that the Broncos will simply allow the time to expire without risking anything as they have dominated the first half, leading 13-0 over the Idaho Vandals, who've beaten them 12 years in a row. 4 3 2 1 and that is it and the bronco partisan crowd will send the orange and blue into the locker room with a rousing ovation as the broncos have thoroughly enjoyed themselves through this first 30 minutes Toki allen joined by uh, sports information director max corbett making his way to our camera and microphone tom scott waiting at the goal line and i'm sure that it'll be a happy but nervous Pokey Allen, knowing that the explosive Vandal offense can make up 13 in a hurry. Let's go to Tom Scott. Very focused week of practice turned into a very focused effort on the field in the first half. Yeah, but when we don't give them very many first downs, we should have a lot more points on the scoreboard. Uh, we got to keep shoot, quit shooting ourselves in the foot, making little mistakes, but we're playing pretty well. We're playing hard and we're pretty focused. Defense has got a great game plan that is once again executed. Well, yeah, uh, I don't think 13 points is going to hold up. They got some, probably some uh, adjustments. So we got to come out and score a lot more touchdowns than this and really play harder. Still a little chance to empty a little bit more of the offensive drawer in the second half? Well, we got some problems now. We got two wide receivers hurt, so it's kind of limiting some of the things we can do, but uh, we'll come out with something. Thanks, Pokey. Head coach Pokey Allen, halftime at Bronco Stadium. Boise State 13, Idaho nothing. We will be back at Bronco Stadium right after this. Larry Manili back with you from Bronco Stadium where it is halftime. The Broncos leading the Vandals in a showdown for the Big Sky Championship that has been dominated by Boise State. They scored in their first possession on Tony Hildy's 16-yard toss to Ryan Akibi. Greg Erickson missing twice from beyond 50 yards but converting from 20 and 33. So it's a 13-0 lead. The Vandals went the entire first quarter without a first down. At midfield, the BSU men's tennis team being congratulated with a presentation of watches for their having won the Big Sky Championship this past year. And we're awaiting both bands who will perform here at the center of the field as well. A lot of traditional rivalries around the country. Let's go down to Ed Vining at the track with some of the scores from around the nation. Ed. You know, Larry, that's the truth. There are a lot of excellent games here as the college football season wraps up. This isn't the only one going on. In fact, 
In the big sky, it's the annual Cat Grizz matchup in Missoula this afternoon. And uh, at halftime, it's 24-7. The Grizzlies cruising in that one. Now, a little later on this evening, it's Minnesota Duluth paying a visit to the Bengals down at Holt Arena. That's a 535 kickoff. And I'd like to be Eastern Washington trying to finish off their season at Northern Iowa. And that game is underway, and there is still yet no score from Northern Iowa. Now on the top 25 scoreboard, let's go to that Penn State. All over Northwestern, they led 45 to 10. That is a fourth quarter score. Penn State, the Nitty Lions, seem to be cruising, looking ready to wrap up the Big Ten with a 45-10 lead in the fourth. Also, Florida, right now on top of Vanderbilt, it is Florida, the Gators, by 10 over the Commodores at halftime. No score yet from Auburn, Alabama, but we will tell you that Miami, the Hurricanes, they blew into Philadelphia, and they're leading big over the Temple Owls, 38-7. Colorado, the Buffs, and Rashawn Salam, he's looking for 2,000 yards. They lead Iowa State by two touchdowns in the third. Texas A&M, they're struggling with the Horned Frogs, but they're up by touchdown in the third quarter. As we move down the top 10, Kansas State just barely over Oklahoma State at half, that one at Kansas State. And the Civil War, the Oregon Ducks jump out early in Corvallis, 7-0 over Oregon State. The Trojans of USC on top of UCLA, 3-0. That one just underway in a Pac-10 clash. And Virginia over Virginia Tech, 42-16, and a big one from Blacksburg. Maybe the upset of the day, Ohio State, the Buckeyes. No problem with Michigan today at home in Columbus, 22-6 the final there. West Virginia, another upset as well, 21-20 over the 17th-ranked Boston College team. And Utah jumping out over BYU, 10-0. That one in the second quarter from Salt Lake. Duke, what a barn burner that was. It was North Carolina by just a single point. That one from Durham. And if we can move on to the 1AA scores, some upsets near the top, or at least pending at this point in time, New Hampshire. Leading the fourth-ranked Boston Terriers, 24-17. That one in the fourth period. And James Madison, a loser today. Fifth-ranked JMU. They fall to Northeastern, 9-6. Eastern Kentucky, no problem with Moorhead State in the fourth, 40-7. We move down our 1AA scoreboard. Appalachian State is upset by VMI, 26-23. The final from there, Cornell. Also another upset brewing. They're leading Pennsylvania. The Quakers trailing by three. That one in the fourth quarter. As we move on down, uh, Battle of Tennessee. It's Middle Tennessee State on top of Tennessee Tech, 14-3 at intermission. And William and Mary. Oh, they will do, as a matter of fact. They're leading 21-14 in the fourth. Central Florida all over Buffalo, 48-0. That is a final. And Stephen F. Austin trailing Northwest. Western State 10-7, that one in the second period. Georgia Southern struggled, but they beat the Citadel 9-7, that one from South Carolina. That should do it for your Chili's halftime scoreboard. One final score, actually, the pass line, South Carolina State. They beat North Carolina a and 46-24. Of course, there are some other big games going on. It's the state championship weekend. And at last check, the Pocatello Indians, they were easily handling the Nampa Bulldogs, 28-7. That one from Holt Arena, that one in the third period. Again, the score right now, it's Boise State 13-0. We'll send it back up to you, Larry. Thank you very much, Ed. The University of Idaho Marching Band performing on the field. We'll be back to give you a look at their efforts uh, right after this break. <laughs> Halftime here at Broncos Stadium. Broncos up 13-0 on their arch rivals from the north. Let's listen now to the University of Idaho marching band.
big cheer from fans on both sides. University of Idaho marching band performing here at halftime. And uh, on the track behind the uh, Vandal bench area, Carolyn Holly, along with Dr. Charles Rook, the president of Boise State University. Hey, Carolyn. Howdy to you, Larry. We want to, uh, first of all, say we don't have Dr. Elizabeth Zinzer with us today. She's got the flu, is that right? She called this morning and uh, sent her regrets. She has a bad case of the flu. We wish her all the best. Yeah, she's a busy lady. She needs her help. But we'd like to take this opportunity for our viewers statewide to kind of get a progress report on some of the issues at Boise State. First of all, tell us what's going on with the Big Sky move, Dr. Rook. Well, we've moved uh, uh, in a year and a half, we will move to the Big West, uh, as has the University of Idaho. They st Idaho, I understand, still has some uh, uh, additional things to work out, but we are there, and we're a new member of the Big West Conference in 1996. It's got to be important that you both can be in the same conference for the type of rivalry that we're seeing today. No question about it. We were pleased that uh, uh, the board uh, said that we both could go, and I wish uh, Idaho all the best in their uh, uh, move. We'll see how that move to the Big West goes. How about the engineering school? What's going to happen with that? We know we want to get it expanded down here. Well, the major issue is to provide engineering needs to the Treasure Valley, and how we do that, I think, is uh, become very important. Uh, that's a conversation the board has uh, entered into. They have an advisory committee working on it. They've asked both presidents to offer their advice and suggestions. But uh, rather than uh, worrying about who's named on the door, I think we really need to worry about how we meet the needs of citizens who stay in the Treasure Valley but need to get engineering degrees. Give us a timeline on this. When do you think there'll be some type of final decision? Uh, you know the board. They move in their own uh, at their own pace. It is on the agenda for the December meeting for the next series of discussions, and we'll just have to go from there. Okay, well, we also want to say uh, our wishes to Dr. Sellen today as well. He just returned, and uh, for another operation, I'm sure you want to wish him hope there. We certainly do. Larry Sellen is just a, a wonderful individual and uh, uh, a wonderful fan of both of these institutions, and we wish him the very best. Well, he did a good job filling in until you came, and I'm sure you're enjoying your time at Boise State any better than it could be right now at this point. Nothing better, uh, except uh, another half just like the one we just saw, Carol. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rick. Larry, everyone that's walked by here today to congratulate Dr. Rick is still pretty nervous because it's only <laughs> halftime. Boy, you're absolutely right, and a great football fan that he is. He is well aware of that. On the field now, the Keith Stein Blue Thunder Marching Band, and we'll let you listen in and uh, see some of their performance as we are at halftime here at Bronco Stadium. Boise State 13, Idaho nothing. Mainline dancers joining the Keith Stein Blue Thunder Marching Band on the blue turf at Broncos Stadium where the home team is up 13-0 in a showdown for the Big Sky Championship.
with you again from Bronco Stadium at halftime. Blue Thunder Marching Band and the Mainline Dancers performing for a capacity crowd. We haven't seen official numbers, but we expect it could be a new Bronco Stadium record. And a great majority of them have thoroughly enjoyed the first 30 minutes as the home team has dominated this football game. The Broncos with 290 yards in total offense and a nine minute advantage in time of possession, leading on the scoreboard 13 to nothing. Individually, Casey Adams has carried 12 times for 53 yards. His Idaho counterpart, Sheridan May, nine carries for 26 yards. Now, May came in with a better than 90-yard lead over Adams in the battle for the Big Sky Rushing Championship. So at this point, he is still about 70 yards ahead. Quarterbacks, Brian Brennan, three of nine for 26 yards, sacked three times, 20, excuse me, a long gainer of 12. Tony Hildy, 14 of 20, 208 yards, sacked once, long gainer of 45, a touchdown of 16 yards to Ryan Akibi. Leading receiver for the Vandals, Dwight McKenzie with two catches for 23 yards. For the Broncos, Ryan Akibi, six catches, 77 yards. Casey Adams, four catches for 73. Jared Housky, three catches for 49. Not a turnover in the game. The Vandals have made that a staple of their game so far this season. They lead the Big Sky in turnovers. They are a plus 12 through 10 games. They have fumbled 13 times, lost five interceptions. They have recovered a dozen fumbles, but more importantly, intercepted 18 opponent passes and they have yet to force a turnover from this Bronco team that leads them 13 nothing captains have returned and uh, may I remind you that the Vandals won the opening coin toss and deferred a decision which means they will most likely elect to receive the second half kickoff and try to get some points on the board here are the Broncos back on the field 30 minutes away from their first Big Sky Championship in 14 years. And now making their way out of the locker room, the Idaho Vandals looking for their seventh title in the last decade. They have been the dominant team in the Big Sky Conference on the short end of the scoreboard here today. And again, Tom Scott is waiting near the near end zone, and he'll have some uh, moments to share with John L. Smith Vandals have elected to receive. We'll be back with the second half and John L. Smith right after this. Great John, Vandals are a second half team. Today's the day to do it. Well, we better do it. If not, we're in big trouble. We've got to get going this half. Are you getting more looks than you even expected today? Oh, there's <laughs> more than we can imagine. Is it, hey, they're doing a good job. We got to quit making mistakes and we got to start covering people and playing a lot better this half. Lots of adjustments. Oh, a lot of it. Have you done it? Oh. We'll wait and see, baby. All right. Thanks, John L. Head coach, John L. Smith. And we're ready to go now. Broncos will kick it off. Greg Erickson to Dwight McKenzie at the seven-yard line. Straight up field, looking for a hole. Chadwick Bird has him at the 25, and he falls forward to the 27-yard line. And let me quickly note that a... Serious cloud cover has moved into the Boise Valley and the temperature has dropped five or ten degrees since the uh, halftime began. It is going to get a little crisp out there in this second half. Gorgeous first half. And for the fans' sake as well as the players, it's good that the moisture has held off. First down Vandal from the 26-yard line. Sheridan May breaks a tackle. Travis Thompson had him behind the line of scrimmage. Couldn't hang on, and May fights his way forward for perhaps one yard in positive yardage. Opening minute of the second half. Vandals trying to get untracked on offense. Three wide receivers at the top of the screen to the open side of the field. Brian Brenning adjusting the play and having to step forward 
to have himself be hurt by his lineman. Chris Cook and wide open. Going for a touchdown. Is Avery Griggs. And on the first, the second play from scrimmage, the Vandals beat the Blitz the best way you can do it. 73 yards for the touchdown. Avery Griggs, a junior out of Pocatello High, who transferred from the University of Missouri. There was no one within 20 yards of him. And Idaho is on the scoreboard. Eddie Howard now to attempt the conversion. Excuse me, Ryan Wolverton to attempt the conversion out of the hold of Eric Heisoff. Ryan Smith to snap it. The snap high, the kick fumbled and blocked, and the Broncos could return it. They will not. Boise State continues to lead by seven, and we'll be right back. And so the battle is joined. 14.02 left third quarter. The Vandals quickly letting it be known that they are not going to roll over after being shut out through the first 30 minutes. They have jumped on the scoreboard. Avery Griggs, who came into the game with one pass reception, going 73 yards. The kick blocked by Brian Smith. So it's 13-6, Boise State. against a Bronco offense that really rolled them up in the first half. Willie Bowens comes out of the end zone. 5, 10, 15, looking for a block. 20, spins around the tackle, out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Tony Hilde and the Bronco offense on the field. With a touchdown lead. Lights on here as the clouds settle in and the afternoon chill descends on Bronco Stadium. Bernie Zimmerman, the motion man. Hilde wants to go deep on first down. Got Ikibi. If he can get there, no. At the 30-yard line, incomplete. Here you see him, number 85, working on Ryan Phillips, pass rusher extraordinaire. Gave Hildy enough time to find a Kibi. They've connected on a couple of these this year. And that's just a play where Hildy throws it as far as he can, and Akibi runs as fast as he can, and hopes the ball collides with him. Second and 10 Broncos from the 24. Hildy with the rollout, now looking to the near side. No, down the middle, ball by Jeff Hill before Bernie Zimmerman was able to make the grab and the Vandals nearly forced the first turnover of the day an area as I noted earlier where they have been so dominant and where it has made such a difference in their game Zimmerman lined up in the slot a vertical route that it's a timing route the ball should have been delivered sooner had the ball been delivered sooner Zimmerman would have caught it but probably would have taken a hellacious hit from Jeff Hill. Instead, a near interception, and Boise State faced with third and 10. From their 24-yard line, and the Vandal fans now starting to make their presence known. They're back in this one. Hildy wrapped up and driven back from the 19, and in fact, he'll be marked at the 18, and Danny Weeks will be on to punt it away, and perhaps a shift of emotions and momentum in this game. He was collared by Barry Mitchell, the redshirt freshman moved into the starting lineup when uh, Amani Johnson left the program for Oregon State. Makes a big play here in the third period. Vandals stand to get good field position out of this punt by Danny Weeks. Weeks had a 59-yarder into the end zone in the first half. And he drives a high spiral that Kyle Gary will fair catch at the Idaho 45-yard line. Vandals will start there. And we'll be right back, 13 minutes exactly left in the third.
14 people more sitting in on this game than saw the 1988 Bronco Vandal game here. That the previous Bronco Stadium crowd record. And with that attendance figure, Boise State has established a new Big Sky Conference single season attendance record. Seven games this season, averaging more than 21,600. And plans to expand in the next couple of years. Sheridan May trying to bounce outside and is hit, but still gains five. Good run on first down. Sheridan May, they're starting to move him around. One of the adjustments made by the Vandals at halftime, moving Sheridan May, trying to make the Bronco defense react with that. And that helped, uh, from what I am told, the 73-yard touchdown connection between Brennan and Avery Griggs. May came in averaging 126 yards a game, had 26 in the first half. Second and five from midfield, the crowd loud. Brian Brennan trying to adjust at the line of scrimmage. Broncos show blitz, fumble, Broncos have it. Brian Brennan dropped the ball. Matt Weston may have been the man who forced it. Travis Thompson recovered it, and the first turnover of the day to Boise State. Broncos need to take advantage of this field position now. Looking left all the way is Brian Brennan. He is covered. Here's Matt Weston knocking the ball loose. And Travis Thompson, uh, head first, Ricky Henderson slide onto the ball <laughs> at the Boise State 49. And covered by Brian Smith, who wasn't about to let the ball come out of that pileup. Now, from their 49, the Broncos on offense. Casey Adams shifted out to the near side as a flanker. A little screen inside, and Adams will lose three. Vandals reacting well to the deception there. Cutback screen, read well by Tommy Connect. Alex Toyos and Paul Kaufman had made it all the way over to set the thing up, but Tommy Connect out of Corvallis, read it, and got it done. Transferred from Stanford, hoping to play quarterback in that quarterback building Vandal system. Wound up behind Hysaw and Brennan. Moved to linebacker, and it's 6'3", 209. Very athletic. He's done a great job for them there. Motion man is a Kibi on second and 13. The play fake to Adams in the swing area and into Vandal territory to the 48-yard line. Paul Kaufman this time having to go all the way to the other side of the field to try to set things up for Casey Adams. Trying to get a block on Duke Garrett. Didn't quite get there in time. Forced Adams to change his plan a little bit here as Garrett went by and got a hand on him. Slowed him up enough for uh, Dan Zemer to make the stop. Here's that uh, swing shift again. The flip shift. We'll see if Casey Adams is involved this time. Third and eight from the 48, and now time. And a little football had been thrown on the field out of the stands, oh and now the Broncos have shown that play <laughs> and cannot show it again. Oh, I'm sure we'll see it again. There not, was confusion. Not immediately. There was confusion on both sides, and I'm not sure the Broncos weren't getting close to the point of uh, a little uh, motion penalty. The well, play clock was winding down as well. When they practiced this play this week, one of the key things was, Tony, make sure they are set. Make sure they're set. So Hildy was waiting for them to set. Third and eight. 11 minutes left, third quarter. Broncos by a touchdown. Hildy. Go long, grab from behind and dropped by Ryan Phillips. His 12th, actually 12 and a half sacks this season now for the sophomore out of Auburn, Washington. Vandals bringing the house that time. Seven men coming in. You see Duke Garrett involved, but Ryan Phillips, the basic pass rush guy, gets his 13th sack of the season. Danny Weeks now to kick it away. Kyle Gary waiting inside the 20. Broncos unable to do anything after recovering the Brian Brennan fumble. Weeks kicking it at the far side. Gary will fair catch at the 10-yard line. That's where the Vandals will start when we come back with 10.22 left in the third.
Fighting. Aaron Neely and Tom Scott with you from Bronco Stadium, a capacity crowd of more than 23,700 sitting in on the 24th renewal of the Bronco Vandal rivalry. Idaho backed up to its goal line, first down, just outside the 10 yard line. And the Bronco fans trying to make it difficult on Brian Brennan and the Vandal offense. This is Sheridan May for yardage, 15 20, and then knocked off his feet at the 21 yard line. Dewan Miller and Keith Walk Green, there was some confusion on uh, the Bronco defense right before that snap. Brian Smith and Cliff Robinson jockeying around and weren't really set. Stefan Reed down on one knee and uh, look at the face There's mask there that apparently eluded the officials. Reed is still uh, on a knee, shaken. The Broncos can ill afford to lose him from their defense. He will, at least for now, be replaced. Vince Watson is in. So among the linebacker core, the Broncos have Vince Watson, Cliff Robinson, and Brian Smith. He started the season with Stefan Reed, Brian Smith, and Jeremy Hayner. Robinson, a sophomore. Watson and Smith, juniors. The senior in the group, Reed, making his way to the sideline. First down, Vandals at the 21. May's longest run of the day. Quick snap. Joe Thomas for a gain of three. Boy, a big play there by Travis Thompson. Thomas had some room. Joe Thomas is brought down by Travis Thompson. He still gets a couple yards out of it. Here's see Tom uh, Travis Thompson fighting off the block of Mike Hughes. Thomas is sophomore out of Port Angeles, Washington. Long gainer of just 21. But he's got great quickness. He makes a miss, much like Casey Adams. Again, the quick snap by Brennan. And a little short pass to Thomas, who runs by tacklers across the 35 for another Idaho first down. And the Vandals now beginning to look like the offense that has dominated the big sky this season, moving the football quickly. Nice job of blocking downfield. Good protection initially. The little screen thrown here to Thomas, and you'll see a great block here on Dewan Miller by the left tackle, Jim Mills. Hey, how you doing? First down, Vandals at their 39-yard line. 9:25 left, third quarter. Idaho trailing 13-6. This is Sheridan May. Jumping tacklers across the 40 to the 45 and a gang of blue, but he got a gain of seven. He's taking some hits, but he's getting some yards now. Travis Thompson, Cliff Robinson on the stop for Boise State, Keith Walk Green. It took that many to take down the high stepping May. See how he uses his leg strength to make things happen. First with a hurdle and the powerful leg thrust to get the ball out to the 47-yard line and a gain of eight. Joel Thomas now replaces May as they shuttle in and out on a play-by-play -play basis. Thomas breaks a tackle by Weston into Bronco territory, out of bounds at the 44, and the Vandals on the move. Vandals have decided to run the ball on their first possession of the second half. They ran it once through for 73 yards, but since then, content to get things going on the ground and set something up later for Brian Brennan. Dimitri Baptist comes in with the play. You can see that Pokey Allen, and, and when you see that number, you understand why he and his staff are not intimidated. They are one and one with Idaho. <laughs> Operating as a Division II program at Portland State, they beat the Vandals and lost to them. Beat the Vandals in 1989, John Priest's senior year, second game of the season. People have talked about this being one of the great Vandal teams. Uh, it'd be tough to be better than that one. That was a great football team, which probably missed winning the national championship because of a, an injury to freeze. Joel Thomas knocked off his feet and perhaps losing a yard. Well, Thomas never really got his balance after taking the handoff from Brennan. Kind of scooted up to the line of scrimmage trying to keep his feet. Getting a little bit darker here at Bronco Stadium. Some Canadian geese flying south. Lights have been on since halftime. And that's about the time the sun disappeared. Second and 11. Vandals at the Bronco 45-yard line. 
Brennan throwing behind the intended receiver. And uh, that was Dwight McKenzie, who was in man-to-man uh, -man coverage by Rashid Gale. And it'll be third and 11. On that second and long, the Broncos blitzing. And Brennan had to let go of it in a hurry. You can bet those Ryan guys Smith aren't talking Cliff about. Robinson. You can bet those guys aren't talking about where they're going to dinner after the game. Seven fifty-eight left in the third. Third and eleven. A huge down for the Vandal offense. The crowd responds knowledgeably. Ball caught and nearly fumbled, but Keith Neal hung on and got the first down inside the 35. Good coverage that time by Dewan Miller. A great throw by Brennan. Brennan had to be perfect with this throw into the coverage of Dewan Miller. Miller tried the shoulder tackle, was unsuccessful, and it took Vince Watson to make the stop, so the Vandals on the move. This drive started on the Idaho 11-yard line. They're now at the Bronco 32 with a fresh series of downs. 7.44. Sheridan May hit by Chris Cook. Powers his way forward inside the 15. Just ran over three people that time. That's the Sheridan May of old, the north and south runner running north. Toward the net, north end zone, great surge by the Vandal offensive line that time. Spencer Folau, and this number 68, is, and then they just stand and admire the effort of Sheridan May. This is where we expected to see the game decided. Idaho's rushing game against the Broncos' run defense. Thomas for a gain of about four inside the 10. And the Vandals' proficiency in the third quarter. In the third quarter for the season, Idaho outscores its opponents 137 to 28. Average scoring in the second half this season for the Vandals, 24 plus. On the Broncos side, this is where the Bronco defense has stiffened all season long, inside the red zones. Second and six at the nine yard line. Boise State leading the big sky in scoring defense. Brennan with the play fake, rolling, may score, he will. Looking for flags, there are none, touchdown Vandals. Vandals once again with trips to the left, clearing out the right side of the field. There is a flag on the field. A late flag. A and motion penalty against Idaho. Oh my, that will really outrage John L. Smith. He wants an explanation immediately. The head set off at the near sideline. He is not vocifer vociferously protesting. I've got illegal motion on the offense. Second down. So it remains second. And now 11 yards from the 14. Four minutes elapsed, but the Vandals losing a touchdown, much as the Broncos did in the first half. Casey Adams ran a punt into the end zone, but a, an illegal block brought it back. They have Keith Neal on a safety. Keith Walk Green, let's see what they do with that. Brennan sees it. He's checking off. And Brennan going that way all the way. Under throws Gary. It's incomplete third and 11 from the 14. Catchable ball for Kyle Gary. He's made some big plays for the Vandals this season and the past two seasons. Has not caught a pass in this game. And has had a couple opportunities to do so. That's one that Kyle... Oh, my. That is very more catchable than I thought for Kyle Gary. You won't see him drop many of those. He's dropped a couple today. Open. 110 career catches for Kyle Gary. Almost 1,700 yards. Had a seven-game streak with... A touchdown catch this season, and the Vandals are going to talk about it. Big down for Idaho, 6.13 left in the third when we come back.
Larry Vanilli and Tom Scott with you from Broncos Stadium. There are a number of great seats in the house. It'll be tough to beat ours. Third and 11 Vandals from the Bronco 14-yard line. Brian Brennan hit as he throws. Pass caught by Keith Neal, driven back from the seven. And it'll be fourth down decision time for John L. Smith and the Idaho Vandals. Well, trailing by seven, I think they can go for the three here, although, yes, they'll go for the three. Ryan Wolverton coming onto the field. Everybody coming once again for the Broncos. Brennan knew it. Got the ball off in a hurry. Nice grab by Keith Neal. They had a one-on-one -on -one with Jason Payne as the Broncos, of course, in man coverage on the blitz. Good tackle by Payne, and so it's Wolverton who has missed once inside the 30. This will be a 25-yard kick. Little angle from the right hash mark out of Eric Heisaw's hole. Ball up, driven through, and with 5.26 left in the third, the Vandals have closed to within 13-9. Big Sky Conference Championship on the line, as you see the Bronco cheerleaders and the Idaho flag. Colors displayed prominently here today at Bronco Stadium. The winner is the undisputed champion of the Big Sky and gets the Big Sky's automatic berth into the Division I AA playoffs. The second place finisher today, and I hate to, to see anybody lose this hard fought game, will uh, also be in the playoffs. Boise State will likely be home next week no matter what happens today. Idaho expecting to travel if the Vandals do not win today. If the Vandals do win, they're expecting to be in the Kibbe Dome next Saturday. And if the Broncos would win today, they might have an advantage that could get them all the way to the championship game because the way they draw, and they would be seated in the top four in the country, they might host all the way to the finals. It's been done a number of times by Georgia Southern and Marshall. And certainly that is something in the back of the minds of Bronco players and coaches even beyond winning the Big Sky Championship and ending a 12-year losing streak to the Idaho Vandals. The main focus of the Boise State team today is the ring. They want the ring. They lead by four with five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Eddie Howard to kick it off. A low line drive that is fielded by Chris Wing brings it across the you no know, he's ruled as having had a knee down when he picked the ball up at the 27 yard line so the Broncos will start there Broncos have given up a touchdown and a field goal here in the third quarter with the momentum in the Vandals corner despite a fumble recovery a 13 play 82 yard drive for the Vandals capped by the 25 yard field goal by Ryan Wolverton Took almost five minutes off the clock, and we out now 5.25 remaining third period on, in the championship tussle. Running the option to the far side of the field, a naked bootleg that's good for about a half-yard gain. Expected to see the option more out of Boise State today. It has not really worked yet. Hildy gained about 15 yards on a straight uh, play fake roll left in the second quarter. Wind beginning to come up now, and it's uh, blowing from right to left up the field and uh, almost quartering at us a little bit into the Bronco face faces as they uh, move left to right now from north to south. Hildy rolling with protection. Got Housky at the 50, 45 out of bounds inside the Vandal 40-yard line. Wide open, Jarrett Housky. We talk about the leader of the Boise State defense being Joe O'Brien. The leader of the offense this year has been Jarrett Housky. One of the guys left over from the previous coaching staff who has really adapted to this program and has just won the hearts of his coaches. What a terrific story he is. Paid his own way to come here on a recruiting visit and walked on when a scholarship wasn't offered. He has certainly earned the scholarship that followed. First down Broncos at the band of 38 yard. Casey Adams, it's a hole, cuts outside to the 30. 
cross blocking inside there. I believe it was Keith Jeffrey and Alex Toyos springing the hole. Here you see Alex Toyos, the most dependable member of that Bronco offensive line, once again springing his running back, Casey Adams. Cedric West with a sure tackle hanging on for dear life because if he misses that one, Adams is gone. Broncos line up in the eye. Second and three at the 30. Hilly on a keeper for two yards. They'll have third and a yard from the 28. They'll be running off tackle again on the option. Broncos have run it about five or six times today. That one just designed to get a first down. 345 left in the third. Clock continues to run, and we've got the dramatic fourth quarter we anticipated shaping up. Broncos leading by four, 13-9. After dominating the first half, they've had to rebound from having been driven back on their heels here in the third quarter. Del Graven for the first down to the 36-yard line, and the drive stays alive. Getting cooler out there. We started the game at about 33 degrees. It may have gotten into the upper 30s, but it's getting a little raw out there. That has not affected the 23,700 fans here. Stadium record. Broncos first down at the Vandal 26. Hey, Mom, send money. Adams, big hole to the 20. And to the 18 yard line. Vandals have decided to go to the ground in the second half with great success, and now Casey Adams having some success as well. His counterpart Sheridan May and Joel Thomas doing it for Idaho. Casey Adams, sixth in Division I AA in all-purpose offense coming into today's game. Already a Broncos single-season record in that category. Trying to help his team win the championship all worked so hard for on both these teams to get to this position. Months and years of struggle. Hildy, quarterback keeper. Looking forward by a tackler to the 11-yard line. That was Barry Mitchell driving Hildy for a few extra yards. Had a quarterback draw as everybody looking at Casey Adams with a good matchup on the left side. The Broncos have the quarterback draw and Hildy Bounces it inside down to the 11-yard line. He is so strong. You might have seen Duke Garrett rip at Hildy's arm and try to pull the ball loose, and the arm never budged. First down, Broncos at the 11. Go, 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 draft! Hildy adjusts at the line of scrimmage. Now throwing the fade. And no call. Housky wanted. It's Lee Schreck call but the uh, official isn't buying Cedric West in coverage for Idaho let's get another look at it the fade boy that it's tough they they must have might have determined that West turned around to play the ball well, they might have ruled as well that Lee Shrek was out of bounds and the pass was not going to be complete anyway because he was right on the sideline second and ten from the 11. That's Bernie Zimmerman, 82, a tight end transfer from the University of Idaho, a Moscow native. Casey Adams, play fake. That was a great play fake. They faked it to Adams. <laughs> they did for a moment, but the throw to Del Graven. Not See a great little boot. And at the feet of Del Graven, it looks like a Vandal got his hands on the ball. Third and 10 from the Vandal 11. Now goes with it. Akibi and Housley wide to the near side. Hildy. Going to the end zone. to give Tony Hildy enough time to make that throw. Second of the day from Hildy to Akibi. First, first one 16 yards, this one 11, and a perfect route run by Akibi. You saw Matashok working on Duke Garrett. 
as the Vandals blitzed again. That is a huge touchdown for Boise State. You've got to honor the speed, and when Cedric West gave on the, on the fake, Ikebe was open by five yards. Greg Erickson's conversion is perfect. 152 left in the third. The Broncos back on top by more than a touchdown now at 20 to nine. Take one more look at the 10th connection of the year for Pater between Tony Hildy and Ryan Ikebe. Ikebe gives it an inside look, then turns it outside in front of Cedric West. And it is six for Boise State. You talk about the turnaround that the Broncos have made, three and eight last year to nine and one this year. Currently, I believe the second best in Division I AA history behind Montana State's great turnaround to win the 1984 National Championship. If you look back to 1992, that 62-16 uh, to 16 Idaho win here, there are only 10 players on the Boise State roster today who played in that game two years ago. And among those 10 are some guys with fierce hearts. Jared Housky, notably, who's, as you said earlier, been the emotional leader of this Bronco offense. Greg Erickson to kick it off now. Dwight McKenzie and Sheridan May awaiting the kick at the 10-yard line. First time we've seen May in kick return coverage. Erickson's kick is driven to, oh, between them. <laughs> and McKenzie has to field it inside the five, and keep, uh, Chris Cook has him down at the three. So confusion between McKenzie and May, perhaps with May's unfamiliarity as the new receiver. May did not make the decision to go for that ball, and on a kickoff, it is live, and you got to do it. He thought, he said yours, and McKenzie thought it was May's, and McKenzie fielding it inside the end zone, had to return it. Darn near broke it, too. And that's one that he can't risk letting the ball go once it hits the turf because it may be recovered by the kick coverage team. Now, from the five, Sheridan May for a gain of four, almost five yards. They look so routine, and it looks like the defense has him under control, and he just keeps surging. Now, Boise State had that happen against Northern Arizona on the opening kickoff of the game. Let the ball bounce. Northern Arizona got it. That time, McKenzie makes a nice recovery of a bad situation. But still, the Vandals in serious field position trouble from their 10-yard line, second and six. Brennan checking off. It's got to be incredibly loud down there. Going deep. Overthrow, incomplete. Kyle Gary had a step on Rashid Gale, but the pass overthrown. The Broncos scoring drive, very, very important scoring drive, covered 73 yards in 10 plays, three and a half minutes on the clock, 11 yards from Tony Hildy to Ryan Akibi, Hildy's 25th touchdown pass of 1994. Akibi catching two of them today. Now on third down. This is a very big down for the Vandals who need to get something moving and get some field position back. They don't want to be kicking from their end zone to Casey Adams. Third and six, the quick snap. Brian Smith coming hard. Ball thrown, caught for the first down at this 17-yard line. Great effort by Keith Neal. And Brennan under heavy pressure, throwing it the only place that he wanted it to be caught, low and away from the coverage of Justin Payne. 54 seconds Orish left Gale. here in the third quarter. 20 to nine, Boise State. Neil with 6'3 height and a great leaper is going to have an advantage. He is matched up right now with Jason Payne. There May. No gain on the play. Line of scrimmage, the 18. It'll be second and 10. Jason Payne gives up seven inches to Keith Neal when they are matched together. Broncos shuttling players in and out. They go to the nickel now. Final 
final 15 seconds of this quarter. The Vandals may run this play before the quarter elapses. for three quarters here at Bronco Stadium. Boise State trying to protect an 11 point lead as we head for the final 15 minutes. Ready to start the fourth quarter here at sold out Bronco Stadium. A record crowd on hand, largest ever to see a Big Sky Conference game. Boise State leading Idaho 20 to 9 in the 24th renewal of their great rivalry, trying to end a 12 game Vandal winning streak in this series. Brian Brennan trying to rally the Vandals back. Rolling from the pressure, throws nearly intercepted by uh, Dewan Miller, the receiver out of, bounds. out of bounds, and it's incomplete. Keith Neal made a great move on the ball after Miller knocked it up, but he landed out of bounds when he caught it, I think, is the official's ruling. I think the primary receiver was Dwight McKenzie. He was tied up getting out on his route. Then he was open, as you saw. DeWan Miller almost got it, but Keith Neal caught it with one foot out of bounds. And speaking of tied up, did you see Joe O'Brien was nearly hogtied by a Vandal lineman blocking him? He was really closing in on Brian Brennan. Brennan looks for the call on a third and ten. Vandals at their 18-yard line. You may have noticed 47, Stephon Reed, back in there. First chance we've had to mention him since he limped off earlier in the third quarter. Vandals have already used one timeout. Brennan gets the play away. And got his man, Kyle Gary, in a foot race with Rashid Gale. He'll score. Touchdown, Vandals. Brian Brennan checked off that time, and it was a great check. The Broncos were bringing seven. He had man coverage. Broncos had their best on Kyle Gary, but Gary got a step on him and redeems himself big time for a couple of drops today. The Vandals... We'll probably go for two here to see the last gasp effort by Gale. Vandals probably go for two to try to get within three with 14.38 left in the game. Yeah, trailing by five is no worse than trailing by four. You still need a touchdown to go in front, but if they can convert the two, they would need a field goal to tie. And, of course, with a big sky having overtime, that is critical. So Brian Brennan has his second touchdown pass of the day. And the Vandals in a two-point conversion lineup. Again, the quick snap. Brennan gets a rush and rolls away from it. Throws to the back of the end zone. Pass caught and draw. Yes, good. Conversion good. They ruled that Keith Neal had it, had possession of it before he went out to the back of the end zone. Timeout on the field, 14.38 left. The Vandals back within a field goal with nearly a full quarter of action remaining. It's Dwight McKenzie. A look at the two-point conversion now at the back of the end zone. Not Keith Deal, but Dwight McKenzie. We've determined on replay the great grab hung on before rolling out of bounds. Great protection that time for Brian Brennan. He just had to make something happen, and the Vandals are back within three. The graphic tells the story just 22 seconds into the fourth quarter, and now the Broncos asked to respond. Kickoff fielded. Jermaine Hudson has it from the five out across the 20, and the Broncos will start at their 25-yard line. Numbers quarter. after three quarters, and the Vandals starting to close the gap a little with a big performance in that period. Well, an 82-yard pass from Brennan to Gary changes that 246, puts the Vandals over 300. The Broncos at 355 at the end of three quarters. One turnover has ended up not hurting the Vandals. Broncos on offense now. 
from the 25. Tony Hilde with the play fake. Down the middle, got Randy Matashock out across the 35 for a first down to the 37-yard line. Matashock's first catch of the day as the Broncos bring it right back. Matashock, a junior college transfer from Redwood to, in Northern California, native of Ferndale, California. Hopeful Vandals looking on as their team trails by three. On that last play, the middle of the field really opened up for Tony Hildy. Sticking with the play, though, a trait that he has really developed this year. expected this two great football teams two great offenses very innovative and two growing defenses originally a bump flat then a comeback route to a Kibi gets the Bronco first down you see players limping out there leaving everything on the field today a Kibi noticeably limping Casey Adams already out of the game once Kibi now over 100 yards receiving again for the third consecutive game Broncos first down at midfield. Casey Adams trying to sweep left end. Martez Venus in front of him trying to throw the big block. And Adams gains five. Power sweep behind Venus and Toyos. Adams now 15 carries, 73 yards on the day. A look at offensive coordinator Al Borges uh, to his left, your right, talking with Del Graven there. Joe Aliotti, quarterback of the Broncos 1980 National Championship team. And as we noted earlier, a cousin of Al Borges. Grandmother's assistants. Did we mention that? Back here yeah, you did. And, uh, did mention it. It's a terrific story. Hilly, again, going deep. Kowski with a stop. Uh, a stop and go. Makes the catch inside the five. Touchdown, Broncos! What an effort by Ryan Akibi! Playing hurt. What an effort dragging a tackler into the end zone. And the Broncos have answered. Casey Adams threw a key block on that play. And that is the thing about Casey Adams that doesn't get set. There is the block on Duke Garrett by Casey Adams. Bought some time for Tony Hildy. Hildy lays it out. Great communication between these two guys who are best friends. And Akibi breaks the plane. Greg Erickson now, the all-important conversion. It is perfect. And with 12.49 left, the Bronco lead is 10. Larry Manili and Tom Scott with you as Greg Erickson ready to kick off for the Broncos who have just recaptured a 10-point lead over their arch rivals, the Idaho Vandals. And now Idaho trying to answer. Plane flying overhead. Good timing by the plane. Simply the best Broncos in K106 FM. Good timing there. <laughs> I'd say hi to my buddy Ken Bass and uh, J105 buddy Spike and Brian today. Sheridan May and Dwight McKenzie again confused on the kickoff. And you can see... As they converse, they're uh, a little bedazzled by the whole deal. Ball, for, to their benefit, through the end zone, and Idaho will start from the 20. Sheridan, go ahead and catch it is the message there. <laughs> That's why they have Sheridan back there. There's the block by Casey Adams. Stop and go route by Ryan Akibi. Montrell Williams could not believe that the ball was thrown that way. Montrell Williams turned around as the ball guided into Ryan Akibi's arms. Vandals now from their 20. Checking off again is Brian Brennan. Marco showing a seven-man front. Sheridan May nearly did turn the corner and stayed in bounds, finally driven out at the 42. Brennan calling a run into the blitz. And once May hits the corner, you're in trouble. 
great blocks along the line. Chris Cook couldn't get him. Jason Payne tried to submarine him and didn't get the job done, and it took two men outside the 40 to take May out of bounds. Jim Mills and Jay Luke's on the right side of the Vandal offensive line. Broncos uh, jumping in and out now. Quick snap again by Brennan. Going deep down the middle and got his man. Caught the like Broncos. McKinsey. White McKinsey caught the Broncos in the zone. Split Keith Walk Green and Rashid Gale and the Vandals very quickly answer. These teams answering each other in an incredible way this afternoon as the Vandals started this thing on their own 20. Well, I picked this game 24 to 7, and for a long while, people must have been thinking, hey, maybe that guy has been in there. Hey. You picked it 32 31, and I think it's probably looking more like that kind of a game. Joel Thomas hit behind the line of scrimmage, will lose a yard to the 25. Great push that time by Vince Watson, forcing Thomas outside, and, and Smith able to get on him for a loss of a yard. Maybe with the Broncos' success that they have inside the red zone defensively, maybe they, they'd rather have them this close than 82 yards away. The Vandals striking for two long pass plays for touchdowns here in the second half. Second and 11 from the Bronco 25. 11.45 left. Brian Smith shows blitz. Now jumps back. And movement in the Vandal offensive line. And a lot of finger pointing by the Broncos on the defensive front. 11 and a half ball minutes ball. left in the game. Procedure penalty, motion against the offense, and it'll be second and 16 from the 30. And an, again, an important penalty because the Vandals now are on the verge of moving out of field goal range. From here, it's a 47-yard kick, and that makes it marginal. Here's a look at how the two quarterbacks have shaped up today. Not bad. Great day for both of them. They're really starting to come on here in the second half. Brennan to throw. Sheridan May caught with a great tackle. Stephon Reed, you've got to make that tackle because there was a lot of room there for Sheridan May on the screen. Vandals calling the screen out of the Boise State Blitz. And May back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 16. And this is a big, big play in this game. We are now under the 11-minute mark. It's 27 to 17. Crowd now rising to cheer. With a little help from Joe O'Brien. Joe O'Brien says, if I'm going to open my mouth, you guys better open your mouths right now. A thunderous ovation on third down. Brennan. Pass incomplete. Juan Miller in coverage, undercut Keith Neal, and it'll be fourth down. And the Vandals will have to make a decision. Have to feel like they're right on the edge of Wolverton's range. This would be a 47-yard attempt. Wolverton's long this year, 52. However, he is one for eight in the 40s. And the Vandals are looking like they're going to go for it. You thought the last uh, noise from the crowd was up there. This may rival the Grambling game from now till conclusion. A legendary day in December of 1980. Pass knocked loose by Dewan Miller, who had so many misfortunes early in the season. Beaten for touchdowns on a couple of key moments the Broncos rallied to win those games. He's made some huge plays as well. Two in a row. Two in a row there by Dewan Miller on Keith Neal. Looked like the ball may have been tipped, but it was thrown right into the arms, rather Dwight McKinsey, but stripped by Dewan Miller. Brian Brennan wanted a flag on the play as he intensely walks over to the Vandal sideline. So the Broncos take over on downs at the 30. And now the clock so critical. 10.29 remaining. Boise State will try to sustain a drive and eat some time. The Vandals will try to get them three and out if they can do it. Casey Adams for two. But don't expect the Boise State offense to be going to a shell here. 
a 10-point lead. They know, as well as anybody, against this Idaho Vandal team is not enough. Just like in the Montana game, they got to try to get more points. That's what their philosophy is. Just heard third quarter uh, from Corvallis, Oregon leading Oregon State 10-6. Oregon State's been giving Oregon problems here the past five years in that series. Well, this one for Oregon, the Rose Bowl on the line. Second and eight, Broncos. Fielding with big pressure, throws to the far side. Has Houski complete first down at the 42. Big catch by Jared Houski with good coverage by Montrell Williams. A big throw by Tony Hildy under pressure on the run. Nobody bit on the fake, and Tony did not sell the fake very well. Well, he put it right on the money, right where it had to be. Hit him right in the numbers. Low and away is probably where it should have been. It was high and away, no problem. 9.45 left. Housky out of bounds, stopped the clock. The Broncos will settle for that with the first down. A little confusion as the Broncos line up for this one. Vandal showing a tight front, expecting the run. Hildy crosses him up, goes deep to the near side for Akibi. No, and no flag. Sanders West on the cover. Fans don't like the tight coverage, nor does Akibi, but it'll be second down. Well, in pass coverage, the officials are letting him play today on both sides of the football. Good coverage by Cedric West. And pretty good throw. That's a tough catch at best, but it did go through Akibi's hands. Before the season, John L. Smith said Cedric West needed to hit somebody this season. He's been doing just that all season long for the Vandal secondary. Revamped and playing well. Second down from the 42-yard line. Must be a motion man. Hildy's pass knocked down. Tried to come back to a middle screen to Ryan Akibi, and it'll be third and ten. Ryan Phillips and Ryan Smith getting the pressure on Tony Hildy. Another big third down play in this game coming up. Nine and a half minutes left in the game. Boise State leads by 10. Well, and the one thing that those passes do, incomplete as they were, stop the clock and save a lot of time for the Vandals. So, in some respects, the Bronco offense playing into the hands of Idaho if they can't convert and keep the drive alive. They've missed an opportunity to run another minute or two off the clock if they had kept the ball on the ground. Hildy gets a big run. Pass caught. Casey Adams across the middle, but at the line of scrimmage, and Danny Weeks will have to kick it away. Broncos trying to get a screen set up to Casey Adams, who was lined up wide right. Broncos released their blocks, but Casey was actually in front of the screen, and the play did not develop. Well, and, and everybody was coming for Idaho that time, and uh, Hildy had no time to waste. Now it's Weeks to kick it away, and Kyle Gary waiting at his 20-yard line. Weeks with a spiral that drives Gary back to the 15. It's outside, and then driven out of bounds between Cliff Robinson and Chris Cook. 8.55 left as the Vandal offense returns. Boy, this thing has been a dining room. It has been one great football game, which is what I think 23,700 expected when they sat down here this afternoon. been around for all 24 of these games and uh, I've never heard more talk about it around town than I heard this week. The ultimate dominant topic of conversation. Ryan Brennan going deep. Incomplete. Dewan Miller in coverage got turned around and actually McKenzie got turned around too. McKenzie running a post route and Brendan expected him to turn it outside because McKenzie was wide open. From the 26, second down Vandals with 8.49 to play. Broncos, or, or Idaho once again has been very effective from this point on the field today. I remind everybody in the viewing area to join Tom and me with Pokey Allen for Broncos Spotlight. Tomorrow night at 11, Sheridan May grabbed and then he drives forward to the 35 yard line it'll be third and one he will not go down chris cook keith walk green sioni fafita 
and as has happened a couple times today with both uh, Hildy and in this case Sheridan May a gang of tacklers some of the impetus coming from behind him driving him forward Chris Cook had a hold of him but Sione Fafita actually when he hit him drove him forward a yard or two to the 35 where it's third and one Joel Thomas stacked up short trying to lean forward but it, well now he does get a the referee the official at the near side started up the line at the 35 and then stepped forward about a yard. He got a favorable spot out of it, and he may have gotten the first down. And that was second effort surge by Joel Thomas. He was stopped at the line. They'll think, measure. And I think the Vandals go for it here. When you wonder, are they, they in, are they in four-down territory at their own 35? I'm not so sure you want to risk that, trailing by 10. Just uh, This offense thinks it can get uh, two inches against anybody. I don't I think it might be it's uh, it's academic I believe yeah, I don't think we'll have to worry about it let's see first down Vance nobody liked the spot on the far sideline and much of this 23,000 plus crowd did not either well credit that to Joel Thomas who, who got that first down with a great second surge clock moving again at eight minutes exactly Sheridan May now over the 100 yard mark 105 yards on the day He's not currently in the game. He's got a good feet on the big sky rushing title, but who's going to get the ring? Brennan, incomplete, intended for Dwight McKenzie. Where well, they had the matchup they wanted. McKenzie running an out route against the linebacker, Vince Watson, and he was open, but the throw delivered errantly. Final in from Missoula, and the Montana Grizzlies no doubt have assured themselves a 1AA playoff berth. Bearing again over our tribal Montana State. Very disappointing season for Montana State. And uh, the Grizzlies going today without Dave Dickinson once again. Bert Wilberger was the quarterback for well, the Grizz. And rumors that he may not even make it back for the uh, playoffs if they get there as expected. Sheridan May for big yardage out to the midfield mark. Mark it at the 49 on the Vandal side. First down Idaho at 7.32 left in the game. Idaho sees blitz and calls the screen. Chris Wing getting in there early because the block had been released as the screen was set up by Jim Mills. Good block in there by the center, Eric Johnson. Tackle made by Keith Walk Green and a good job of wrapping up Sheridan May after he'd run by a number of tacklers. Seven and a half minutes left in the game. 27-17, Boise State. May. Forward and then driven back by Watson. Gain of a yard, perhaps two. Give him two to the 48-yard line. Miami all over Temple today. Colorado, not as decisively over Iowa State as you may have thought without suspended coach Jim Walden. Texas A&M beating TCU. Kansas State gets past Oklahoma State today. And there it is. Battle for the Roses for the University of Oregon. They're up by four in the third. In US, Corvallis. USC trying to stay alive. If Oregon gets beat and they win, they go to the Rose Bowl. 6.35 left here. Rocco leading by 10. And that one badly incomplete intended for Keith Neal. Brandon may have just thrown that one away. Good coverage by the Bronco secondary because Brandon could not have asked for any better protection than he got on that play. The Vandal offensive line is really starting to protect well now. Mills, Lukes, Johnson, Hughes, and Folau. You see Joe O'Brien trying to fight off a block. Another big third down play in this game. Six and a half minutes left now. Third and eight. A lot of time again for Brennan and his receiver, Neal, falls down. It's incomplete. Brennan walking over to Neal to talk about the route. Another possible miscommunication. And the Vandals will kick it away. At least they'll show punt. Eddie Howard on. Casey Adams back in return position, but the Broncos will be wary of the fake on fourth and eight. 
Idaho, no doubt, hoping to play field position now. Pin the Broncos, hold them, get the ball back, and strike with 6.26 to play. Casey Adams kind of walking like a penguin these days with the injuries he has sustained this season. Howard does, in fact, kick it a high spiral. Adams showing fair catch and makes it at the nine. Mark it at the 10-yard line. That's where the Broncos will have it with 6.18 remaining. And leading by 10, the Boise State offense is back. And the defense getting a huge hand as it leaves the field, stopping the Vandals on that drive. You know, there was only one coach in the big sky this summer at the meetings in Sun Valley who mentioned Boise State as a contender for the big sky championship, and that was John L. Smith. He was the only one to mention it. He really did, and he told he told me yesterday, he said, I told these guys there's a, a dark horse, if you will, in the Bronx. Hildy going deep, badly overthrown. Ryan Akimi, the intended receiver, but uh, he's about 30 yards short of that one. Well, Hildy was in trouble that time on a blitz by Tommy Connect, and I think Hildy was throwing that one away into the deep blue of the 40-yard line on the other side of the 50. Tony Hildy, unofficially right now, 23 of 36, 337 yards, three touchdowns, all to Ryan Akibi. Clock stopped with 6-11. Second and 10 Broncos from their 10-yard line. Vandal leading the big sky in turnovers. Would like to make something happen here. Casey Adams into the secondary. Across the 20, first down Broncos. Big play. Huge play. That'll allow them to run another minute to two minutes off the clock. A quick hitting trap to KC. This time running right. You see the trap block by Martez Venus and the missed tackle, unusual missed tackle by Josh Fetter and Montrell Williams had to save a big game. Big game. Well, we won't wait for that one to hit the uh, screen here. Oregon State has taken the lead 13 to 10 over Oregon. Still in the third. Broncos with a first down here at their 21. Leading by 10. Casey Adams hit at the line of scrimmage. A penalty flag from the far side of the field at the line of scrimmage. That stops the clock as well. Five and a half minutes left in the game now. The Vandals have two timeouts left. Boise State has all three. Illegal motion against the Broncos. Now the Broncos lost a yard on that play. And if uh, the Vandals accept this penalty, that will buy Boise State more time. So they may decline it and take the down. They do decline it. Get the Broncos into second down instead of giving him first down all over again and giving Boise State one extra play on this series of downs. So it is a loss of one to the 20. Second and 11. And uh, still some conversation. Uh, Mike Stanley wants to be sure he's got all the I's dotted and T's crossed on this one. It is indeed second and 11. 27 to 17, Boise State. 538 left in the game. Idaho with a 12 game winning streak over and its rival to the south. And the clock runs again. Well, and Tony may stand here for about 20 seconds. 15 on the play clock. Adams looking for a block out to the 25, and it'll be third and about six. Well, the power sweep. With Toyos and Venus out there, they're just and Kaufman. They're running as hard as they can to get to their assigned men, and I mean, to, to try and get the corner and give him a chance. Boy, a great look at block Venus. down by by Del Graven on Tommy Connect, and that got Casey Adams to the corner to pick up five. Third and seven, 4:45 remaining. Ranky Huma in the game now for Idaho. We haven't seen much of him. Again, the mass shifting by the Broncos on offense. Hildy rolling into pressure and throws, and his receiver fell down. Broncos wanted a flag and get one out at the 40, 
where Jared Housky was bumped. He was not involved in the pass, but apparently bumped by Montrell Williams, who's pleading his cause, apparently to no avail to the official nearest to him. This is a huge call. Gives Boise State a first down. If, if that's what it is, it's a first down for Boise State with 4.31 left in the game. It would have been fourth. Pass interference against Idaho. And Housky was not involved in the play. See, Ryan Phillips really putting a well, pressure. Well, Housky, Housky was, was involved in the play. I thought he threw the ball at a Kiwi shorter, and that ball did go uh, in the vicinity of Housky, who was also on the ground. And it was a catchable ball. You see Pokey Allen on the far side talking to Dave Stromswold. His team has won nine games this season. First time in 13 years that Boise State has won nine regular season games. School record for a regular season, 10 in 1979 chance to do that Tony Hildy quieting this crowd and they respond as faithful fans <laughs> it's hard hard for them to do that nine penalties against the Vandals 65 yards well penalties have killed it they have really hurt themselves with mistakes as John L. Smith indicated at halftime Hildy hands to Casey Adams breaks the first tackler to the point. Importantly, the clock continues to run with 4.20 remaining. Jordy LePayne, number 74, might be fortunate that he wasn't flagged for helping the runner. He kind of got on the back of Casey and pushed him about three extra yards. Clock running, 4.10 left. There are a lot of huge games around the West today. BYU leading Utah, 24-20 in the fourth. 13-10, Oregon State over Oregon in the fourth. UCLA 13, uh, USC 12 in the fourth. Casey Adams, no game. Clock continuing to run with 340. The Vandals have two timeouts at their disposal. And it appears that they are using one here. 338 to play. When we come back, the Broncos is trying to run out the clock and protect a 10-point lead. Three minutes and 38 seconds to play. The Boise State Broncos leading the Idaho Vandals by 10. Third and five Broncos at their 45-yard line. Idaho with one timeout remaining. A first down here would just about seal it for Boise State. Hildy to the air. Incomplete intended for I, Nikibi, and Idaho retains hope. The Broncos will punt. Kyle Gary, the dangerous return man, has an 82-yard touchdown return on the season. Danny Weeks to punt. Hit 159 in the first half. No big rush. And Weeks has boomed one. Gary lets it bounce inside the 10. Knocked back into the field of play. No, a tremendous effort. Like Jason Payne, who made the effort to try and knock that ball back into the field of play, just missed. And the Vandals get a break and will take it at the 20. 80 yards from a touchdown that would give them a chance with an onside kick to get back into this game. 3.22 to play, one timeout available for Idaho. Brian Brennan wants to go to the air. Nobody there. Great coverage by the secondary. And uh, Keith Neal makes the catch outside the 30, first down. Brennan buying time until somebody got open, and it was Neal at the 33. Stop the clock, by the way, with 3.13 remaining. Listen to the crowd. Brennan has to unload quickly. This time, Neal steps out of bounds at the 35 after a gain of just two.
second and eight Vanda. Neal into the secondary running free. Stephon Reed trying to corner him. Neal runs out of bounds at the 24 yard line. And the Vandals strike so quickly. 257 remaining. It's not over yet. Give you another look. Keep Walk Green missed a jersey tackle. And Neal had no intention of trying to turn it upfield for five extra yards. He saved a lot of time by running out of bounds. Very alert decision. Brennan with open field in front of him throws for the end zone incomplete pass uh, well out of bounds and Dwight McKenzie not happy with the treatment he got down there but the ball incomplete Jason Payne in coverage for the Broncos so it'll be second and 10 from the 24 with 250 to play Boy, Brennan had a lot of room in front of him, but then Joe O'Brien began to close, and he went to the end zone. Second and ten. Brennan incomplete again into the third row of spectators on the sideline. Handles are being... Handles are being very patient. Handles are being very patient on this drive, going sideline routes, conserving clock, and thinking that uh, they will leave enough time to get the ball back if they get a score here. Well, now they have to get a first down. It's not a touchdown. Third and 10 from the 24. Brennan runs from the pressure and now will run out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Make it to 17. So it'll be fourth and three. Brennan this time saw that he had an open lane to the sideline. Jason Payne and Rashid Gale making sure he did run out of bounds. Fourth and three. The season comes down to this. Sharon and May, first down, fumbled out of bounds. The Vandals retain possession with a first down at the 10. Actually, just inside the 11. And that stops the clock with 2.32. That's a great grab by May. Stefan Reed strips him, but the ball out of bounds. Vandals not chancing a running play on fourth and three using the dependable hands of Sheridan May to get this first down. 2.32 left. And it's loud down here, Mr. Manil. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I wish I were down there with you just to soak up the flavor. It's loud up here. First and ten Vandals. Brennan. Kyle Gary dragged out of bounds at the seven. That one only took six seconds. Rashid Gale on the tackle. Keith Neal running a route deep in the corner. Gary coming underneath. The Vandals showing great patience here as they will need the, to get the ball back again. 2.26 remaining. You can see the Broncos owned the first quarter and in more ways than just the scoreboard. 290 yards total offense to 67. The Vandals have responded but so has Boise State with each charge. Brennan, that ball actually off the feet of Sheridan May and incomplete, and it will be third and five from the six. Good coverage by Brian Smith that time. Forced Brennan to throw that ball away and stop the clock. 2.21 left. Tom, what's the mood on that Vandal side? Well, I'm all the way down in the end zone, so I can hardly even see down there. I'm down here where the action is. <laughs> 
Brennan to the end zone. McKenzie. Touchdown, Vandals. 2.14 to play. Boy, Brian Brennan has really had a second half today. Laid that one out perfectly. I can't see it, Larry. Talk about it. Well, it's a great throw, as you said. He laid that one out. It was a fade to the corner. McKenzie makes the grab. A foot down inbounds. Did he hang on? The official says yes. And touchdown. Now, Ryan Wolverton for the important conversion that will draw Idaho within three. Kick is up and good. 2.14 to play. 27-24 Broncos will be back. <laughs> 